wet and steamy night here at Cajun Field in the heart of South Louisiana, but it's a pretty good bet that that's not going to dampen the enthusiasm. The Louisiana's Raging Cajuns and Grambling State's Tigers open their 2018 season. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan McDonald, along with my buddy and partner, Gerald Broussard. We've got what we think is going to be a fun one as Louisiana and Grambling square off for the first time ever. And, Gerald, there's a lot of optimism in both of these camps, newfound optimism in Cajun country because of that man, new coach Billy Napier. Yeah, Coach Napier brings a lot of excitement. The fans are excited to see what kind of offense he's going to put together and what kind of team he's going to put together for the Cajuns. As you see there, he's coming from Arizona State, but he's got a lot of history with him with, with Clemson, with Alabama, and a couple of national championships on his resume. And conversely, Broderick Fobbs hasn't left Louisiana a lot in what has a storied playing and coaching career. He returned to his alma mater five years ago to rebuild that once great grambling program. But, Gerald, I'm not sure that even the most rabid Tiger fans could have asked for the success they've had the last four years. No, I tell you, it's really neat to see Coach Fobbs doing what he's doing and also doing it with his dad on the staff. That makes it really cool. But this isn't Coach Fobbs. This is Grambling's first time to come to Cajun Field. But Coach Fobbs was on the Cajun staff back under uh, in 2000 to 2002. So he's bringing a storied program here that he's got it back to the level where the, the Grambling people have anticipated. Both of those guys look like they could still be playing. Speaking of playing, Louisiana is going to be playing two quarterbacks tonight. Andre Nunez there will get the start after pretty much a year-long battle with Levi Lewis for that starting job. Yeah, Andre stepped up, and you just saw him there. He's, he's got that fire with him. He's got that confidence with him. And that's what the Cajun fans want to see. Can he carry over the glimpses he showed last year, bring it into this 2018 season, and, and take the Cajuns and, and take them and go? We'll see how they fare against a Grambling defense that was one of the best in the FCS last season. They only gave up 18 points a game to FCS teams. One of the reasons is that guy, linebacker Darius Christmas. Yeah, I tell you, Dan, I'm, I'm FCS, FBS, don't matter. This guy can play now. Makes a lot of plays from the middle linebacker position, but he's also got a number of tackles for losses. They will bring him on blitzes, a lot of multiple schemes out of it, and you'll see Christmas all over the place. The Tigers hoping that Christmas comes early this year and that defense can Ladies test that. Louisiana offense. It's the Cajuns and the Tigers ready to get this season going. All that action comes up right here next from Cajun Field. Six Pacific on Showtime. It's sort of ironic that these two teams separated by only three hours, north and south in Louisiana, but they've never met in football, even though both of them have a long football tradition. The uh, Raging Cages have been playing for more than 100 years, grambling since, I think, back in 1927. Gerald, it's, it's sort of amazing that these are the only Louisiana teams who really haven't played each other. Yeah, it really is, and it's exciting. I know that the, the people we've talked to from Grambling that are here, they're excited about it. We've got a nice contingency of Grambling people, and, and also the Cajuns, you know, ushering in the Billy Napier era, and we will get to see his offense and Andre Nunez as, as, as the Cajuns come back. Cajuns didn't win the toss and elected to receive, you know, which most times you see people defer, but they want to start the season with the ball. Could be a late arriving crowd. There has been on and off rain in the Acadiana area all afternoon. In fact, we had a little bit of a shower just about 15 or 20 minutes ago. Hopefully it won't dampen all the enthusiasm of these two teams. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And, and again, uh, you know, I think we're going to see something with where everybody is, the hesitancy, the unknown. You know, Grambling's defense brings back some experience, but the Cajun offense, where it's going to go, what we're going to see out of it, we'll get our questions answered early. It'll be Miguel Mendez to kick things off for the Tigers. He's not the normal place kicker. Marco Roscoe is returning. He'll probably handle the placements. Raymond Colley is deep. He returned the opening kickoff for the Cajuns for a touchdown last year against Southeastern Louisiana. In fact, he had two kickoff returns in that game, and we are underway, and it will be Colley, but it'll go into the end zone, and the Cajuns will take it at the 25 into the end zone for a touchback. First the Raging Cajun starting lineup, the big line. question for everybody at the start of the, really the start of the spring and the start of the fall was who was going to play the quarterback position. But Andre Nunez announced on Wednesday by Billy Napier that he was going to get the start. Yeah, and you see Regas at, at the running back, the one back, Williams, seven, Bradley, and Malone at the receiver, experienced players there. Barnes at the tight end. And then that's a, that's a really good Cajun offensive line with Robinson, Marks, Prudhomme, 
uh, Dotson and Hunt. Cages do have skill players returning from last year. The big question was at quarterback, and it's Kale actually getting the start at tailback, and now he breaks out sweeping wide to the right, empty backfield. Nunez to throw one first down, and he's got the completion already. It actually got uh, jarred free right there. The Cajuns went empty, moving K- moving Kale out of the backfield to see if Graham would stay man. They did stay man. Uh, good throw by, by Nunez, but just a, a drop on the Cajuns' part with, with Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams finds an opening, a surprise little bit of a starter, and there's uh, Christmas already in on a play from the linebacker spot. We'll expect to see him a lot for that Tiger defense tonight. Yeah, guy's all over the field. He moves around and he makes plays. Throw out to the left side is incomplete, intended for Malone. Yes, pass incomplete, intended for number 13, Raheem Malone. And the Cajuns will face third an early ten. third and long. And you see Malone is playing at the outside receiver. In the past, he'd been in the slot for the Cajuns, but he'll have some extra routes out there and just a quick out route on the time, underthrown by Nunez, get, trying to get it outside. Gramlin showing the man c- uh, coverage in the secondary, which that's what they do, Dan. Number 18, is that the a Gramlin game? Tiger defense. We talked about Christmas, but Anthony Mullins at the... One of the end positions is a good one, a transfer from Mississippi State. Third and ten for the Cajuns. Nunez with Regas in the backfield, and he is going to be brought down. And that's that man. Christmas comes early for the Tigers. Yeah, he does a good job of getting around and avoiding blocks. I mean, it's one thing to be able to get pressure from the outside, but Christmas does it from the inside, coming from off the line. And you'll see the little twist inside. He beats the center guard in in there and does a nice job of getting Nunez down. It's one thing to get there. It's another thing to finish with a sack. A loss of 10 yards, and it will be fourth and 20 for Louisiana. Reese Reese Burns, the freshman Aussie kicker, will be punting it away. Malik Rout, sophomore wide receiver, is deep for the Tigers as he's going to fair catch this one. Fair catch call Near by midfield. Grambling's going to start with Grambling. good field position when we return. 14-04 already. The Tigers will be on offense when we come back. You're watching the Tigers and the Cajuns live from Cajun Field. Could make history. What's in your wallet? We talked about the Cajuns quarterback situation, but the Tigers also had a battle for a quarterback spot. And Jeremy Hickbottom is the guy that finally came out of that, a squadman last year, redshirt sophomore. He and Alden Clark, a transfer from Arkansas State, went back and forth during the spring and during the early part of the fall. But Roderick Fox said Hickbottom is his man. Right, and, and, you know, Gremlin's got some work to do on offense. They're replacing Devontae Kincaid, the old, offense, the old quarterback with, uh, player of the year in the SWAC last year. But they're also replacing their offensive coordinator. Eric Dooley is gone now at Prairie View. And, and on the offense now, you've got Gremlin, Reggie Nelson is the Jerry offensive Hickbottom. coordinator, old line coach over there. Reggie was a really good player, Dan, from Ash. Hickbottom is under center. He'll have a new backfield in there. Going up top early, and he's got a man open, and it is complete. Clinton Gleiss. That's complete to number 13. Gleiss runs under it. Michael Jaquette makes the tackle for the Cajuns, but not before Geis got behind the secondary and a big opening game for the Tigers down to the Cajun 10. Yeah, see, Hickbottom and Gramlin will push the pace, try and tempo and get there with the next play, but... The- they spread the Cajuns out with the inside guy or the outside guy working the inside vertical. 47 yards on the first play, and the Tigers with the first scoring threat. Hick bottom in the shotgun. He'll take it up the middle himself. He'll pick up a couple inside the 10-yard line. Hick bottom on the keeper. He's a big cat now, Dan. He's all of 6'4". He's well over 200 pounds. Listen at 210, and he can do the job running the football. And, and reading some of the stuff that Coach Nelson talks about, ready to, is seven. that they would like to be balanced. They being Gramlin would like to be balanced on offense a little bit so to be able to run it. They've got four returning starters in the offensive line, so he feels good about his guys up front. Justin Middleton with the tackle. The Cajun linebacker. Second and goal. Going on the left side, this is Kevin, Kevin Dominique, Dominique on the red carry. shirt freshman from Plaquemine, transfer Style from Ball State. Yeah, Dominique following that backside to the left side. You've got Shea Manning at the backside, that left tackle getting a wash down. You see the Cajun starters, 
a few returning starters, just about three. A lot of new faces on that Cajun defense, and that's where they had the biggest influx of new talent during the spring practice. Third and goal for the Tigers from the Cajun three. And the fans are on their feet for the first time. Hickbottom looking under some pressure. He's going to scramble out, and he's not going to get there. Hickbottom on that carry. Yeah, Malbro on the pursuit right there, coming off of the off the outside for the Cajuns and just chasing Hickbottom down. Uh, doesn't need to take that hit. Maybe throw that away at another time, but at least he didn't force it. You get, the Tigers are in a position to come away with points. That's what you want to see out of your quarterback and not make an ill-advised decision by trying to force something in and throw a pick. Shazir Malbro, a hometown guy from Karen Crow, right down the road from Cajun Field, makes the tackle, and Mark Orozco will be on to – Attempt a 22-yard field goal. He was 18 out of 22 last year in his junior season. High snap, but nice job by the holder, Mendez, to get it down, and the kick is, kick up, is up and is good. Orozco was 12 of 13 inside 40 last year. He's one for one now, and the Tigers jump to an early 3 to nothing lead. The Cajuns will get the football when we come back. More driven. Kicking off of the Tigers. You see some of the fans dressed to handle the wet conditions as Grambling with a stunning drive early. 46 with a 47 yard completion from Higginbotham to Geis set up the 22 yard field goal. And that was actually Garrett Urban, the punter. Did handle the field goal duties and not the returning outstanding kicker, Mark Orozco. I tell you, that was a fantastic job, though, to get it down. They had a lot of volume on the snap as we see the kick. Had a lot of volume on the snap, and he was able to get it up, get it down in the wet conditions. Miguez again lofting it inside the five. And this is Kale looking for some room, and he'll get out over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. He's got a flag on it. Looks like it may be some kind of a push in the back as the umpire comes running in. Had an opportunity there to see Kale, and I, I don't anticipate Raymond doing a whole lot of fair catching. Uh, he's the kind of guy that, that thinks he can go to the house every time he touches it. As well, you can see, the uh, foul will go against the cages. But with the new fair catch rule, you can fair catch the ball in play. Anything inside of 25 comes out to the 25. Just like Offense. a touchback, Returns cages will get hit for a holding Horton. penalty. Our first penalty Junior of the ball game. The foul. Bring it back to the 19-yard line, down. and cages again will start deep in their own territory. We talked about the Cajuns being able to run the football, Dan, you know, come out the first three plays of the game, three passes, had one, uh, you know, let's just say like it was, was a drop on the first play of the game. Then the next one ball was, was not thrown well, and the third play was a sack. Let's see if the Cajuns try and get to the run game here and, and, and establish the big guys up front. Trey Regis in the backfield, 813 rush yards, nine touchdowns last year. He will take the First handoff and find a hole on the right side. He'll pick up about five on first down. One thing you'll notice if you're a Cajun fan or have watched the Cajuns last year, Trey played a lot last year for the Cajuns. A lot different body than he has now. You see on camera, he's leaned up. He's lost about 20 pounds and has looked good in his preseason camp. Cornerback Trevon Callahan making the stop there. Quick out pass, and it goes to... On the right side, Raheem Malone returning after an injury plagued end of the season last year and in spring practice. He'll get it out near midfield, a big gainer for the Cajuns in their first first down. Yeah, good throw and catch out there by Nunez to Malone. Good blocking on the outside by the two receivers out there for the Cajuns. Had a run play called, take the bubble if you get it, took it, liked it, and made a good play out of it. 19 yards on the pickup, first down. Regus again in the backfield, and he'll take it up the middle on the delay and pick up about three on first down. Well, I think what you look for if you're the Cajuns, can you get Gramlin on their heels if we have uh, one of the Tigers down for, for Gramlin there on defense? But Gramlin will do things to mix up your front with a three-man front and move their linebackers around. If you sit back and pass pro, then you're going to have to pick it all up. If you can get aggressive with them in a run game, then you put them on their heels. That's Percy Cargo, a returning starting linebacker, a guy who had three and a half sacks last year. He was actually third on the team in tackles with 54, and he's being attended to 
Yeah, he, at about the line of scrimmage. He and Christmas were the two captains for Gramlin there, and they're both really good players at the inside backer. Again, you know, when you see what they do schematically on defense, you know, it, it, Everett Todd is their defense coordinator. He was at ULM for several years, so the Cajuns have seen him, or he's seen the Cajuns, although this is a new Cajun staff, but, but runs a three-man front, three-three, three-four look, and, and he's going to try and mix you up. It, it, there's some feast or famine in it. I mean, he's going to try and get you as you Intercom see him trying to. Him walk a little yeah, less gingerly for, for Percy there, but maybe he'll, maybe he'll rally and get back to it. Cargo's a native of Donaldsonville, played at Donaldsonville High School. He's still not putting very much weight second down and seven for the on Cajuns. that leg as the Cajuns will get set for a second and seven. Nunez has him in the pistol this time. Regus in the backfield now. Moves out to the left. Again, he'll take the handoff. Not much there that time as the Tigers swarm on defense and hold him to pick up of only about one yard. The Cajuns are using a gap scheme on the front side of things, blocking their offensive line inside, bringing the backside line around, and still having to bubble opportunities on the outside if you choose to take them. Gramlin, as we said, they're not just going to line up and stay still. Where you think he is, he's not going to be. And so they move people around. Cajuns offensive line got to be able to figure it out to move them off. Malcolm Williams with the tackle. Guy that started or rather played in 11 games last year, making his first start. Nunez back to throw. A little bit of a bubble screen. It goes to Keenan Barnes, and Barnes finds some running room. He's into Tiger territory. Yeah, that was a double screen there. You could throw the swing pass to the left if you wanted it. If not, come back to the jailbreak to the right. Took the now screen coming underneath, and you see Keenan running with it. Good job by the lineman getting out in front of him and then going to make play. Cajun's going tempo. 37 catches for Barnes last year on first down. Up the middle, this is Elijah Mitchell. Getting his first carry of the game, and he's found the seam for about nine. Anthony Mullins there it's to make the tackle. Elijah Mitchell's a guy that the Cajun people Second have wanted to see. One. You know, the word was he may even redshirt this year because of a foot injury. Done a fantastic job in his rehab. And, Dan, we saw him a couple times on film in spring, I mean, in two a days, and, and Cat looks good now. Second and short. We'll see how the Cajuns play it here. It'll go to Mitchell again. He's found the seam. Mitchell to the 20, to the 10. He's at the 5, and he's going to be out of bounds. Well, it's going to come back, though, Dan. The Cajuns had illegal motion here. They had their tight end shift positions and did not come to a complete stop before the motion. The second motion guy came, and so he, he just kept his feet chopping and was running. He's got to come to a complete stop before the next guy goes in motion. Second big penalty on the Cajuns. One put them in a deep hole to start the first drive. This one takes away a big gainer down to the Tiger one-yard line. Illegal shift. And it it is an illegal shift. Two men in motion at the snap. Jeremy Parker, referee tonight. Repeat. With his Sunbelt crew. Again, Johnny Lumpkins was a tight end. He traded from one side to the other. You can do that. He's just got to come to a complete stop because there was another guy starting motion. Had the, another, had the other receiver not come in motion, Johnny's free to move all he wants. But once the other guy came, he has to be at a complete stop before that guy moves. You see the seam that Mitchell found. But again, the motion penalty brought that one back. Good hustle. Downfield by Chris Grant to keep him out of the end zone on the play that did end up coming back. Second and six. This time it's, uh, it'll again, this is Regus. Regus bounces it outside. He's at the 20, at the 10, he's at the five, and knocked down at the two yard line. Cajuns being a little innovative there, going to an unbalanced line. What they did, they had both receivers to the top. If you can see the tight end to the bottom down here, good job covering people up by the offensive line. Straight zone blocking, hat on hat, tie him up, get him going. There goes Trey. Don Quarian Fields runs him down. First and goal. They'll hand it to Regus, and he powers into the end zone. I tell you, that's a good way to answer up the field goal for the Cajuns. Run right at that Tiger defensive line because you know that they would kind of confuse you a little bit and then get when the big boys from. There's no better play in football than when the fat guys get a little gravity going. You got a guy behind you with the ball, scrumming onto the house. And they ran it to the left side. We have figured going in, the Cajuns would run a lot to the right side because that's where some of the power and the returning veteran talent is. But the Cajuns go left and they get their first touchdown of the year. Kyle Fowl 
Puts the extra point up and good. The transfer from Oklahoma handling the kicking duties tonight. Another battle. The Cajuns answer the field goal. They drive the length of the field. With 8.24 left in the first quarter. Cajuns. QLED TV. You can't look away. Trey Regas put it in the end zone nine times for the Cajuns last year. He's got the first one of this season. Well, and, and Dan, you mentioned the left side running left, but it actually came from behind Kelsey Dotson and Robert Hunt, the two guys that we thought it would. They picked up the twist really well, and then they followed it into the end zone. What I liked about what Robert did, he picked up the twister and then followed it in there to get a little extra push. Dude, it's a groovy feeling. I said fat guys earlier, and I mean that affectionately because I'm one. It's a fun feeling to be in the zone when the guy gets in there. I'm Dan McDonald, along with Gerald Broussard, a guy who knows that offensive line. He was a standout offensive lineman here for the Raging Cajuns. Also coached a couple of stints on the Cajun staff and has been in Louisiana well, just about as long as I have. Yeah, long time. Yeah, long, long time. time. And I think this is Linden kicking off for the Cajuns. That is Calvin Linden kicking and puts it into the end zone, and it's bobbled down there for a second by Brooks. So Brooks will kneel on it. And Demian Brooks, the deep man, First as the Tigers really now will take it at the 25-yard line. And we had a late arriving crowd because of the, the weather, but uh, it, it's turned into a pretty good crowd here yeah, it's tonight. It's up nice. Yep, depending. With the rain still coming and going. You see the Tigers, have they have been absolutely dominant in the SWAC over the last few years. Look, look at that record in the SWAC since 2014 since Broderick Fobbs got there. You know, when they brought Coach Fobbs in, they, they brought him in for a reason, but I don't think anybody would have anticipated he would have turned it around this quick and, and become what they are now. And I don't I think they've, they've had two years of undefeated SWAC play. I don't know that they'll go through that this year, but Broderick's done a fantastic job there. Hickbottom. In the shotgun, he'll square to throw on first down. The completion is out here on the right side. It goes to Endymion Brooks, who was deep on the kickoff. But he'll actually lose a yard as his knee hit when he made the reception. They're trying to get the ball on the outside, just get speed and space, and that's all Grandma's trying to do. Instead of having to block everybody inside, just block one on the outside. The problem was that the ball was a little bit low, and, and Brooks wasn't able to get anything going. Probably a wet football there. As we said, it's still on and off a little bit of a shower here. It's been basically that way all afternoon here in South Louisiana. Second and 11 as Hickbottom is back to throw under pressure this time, and he's going to have to get rid of it, and he does way over the Grambling sideline. Good pressure by Gerald McDowell back there. Yeah, the transfer for the Cajuns. We've heard his name. We've, we've wondered if he was going to make some plays. He shows up early in there, so getting some pressure, getting hit bottom out of the pocket. That's the thing that you got to be able to do is get him off point, get him out of balance, and see if he can make a throw on the run. Native of Covington, transferred from Ole Miss, actually a graduate transfer, is, uh, is becoming the norm almost in college football with players graduating from one school and transferring and being able to play immediately at the other. The you Cajuns know, have a couple. Let me mention foul the kicker earlier. He's transferred from Oklahoma. Third and ten. Again, pressure, but this time avoiding it, going up, and he will pick up the first down. Nice move by Hickbottom, but there's a flag back in the backfield. We might have a hold. Well, we mentioned Christmas earlier uh, on the first drive about his the third play of the game, getting the sack. It's one thing to get pressure. It's another thing to get the sack right there. Good job by Higbottom avoiding Middleton. Middleton comes free. Needs to make that play right there. Higbottom shows his athleticism. We will wait for our referee, Jeremy Parker. And it is going to be a hold against the Tigers and also illegal procedure against the Tigers. Cajuns will have the option for either one. Yeah, you take the big one. And they will take the, obviously, the 10-yard oh, holding penalty. It's third down and 20. Illegal formation, offense. That penalty is declined. Holding offense, 52. 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down. So it'll be third and 20 for the Tigers. Yeah, Cajuns in their speed package. Now you got two defensive linemen in here, and you got two outside linebackers on the outside with two inside backers here. So got a nickel look in their four man front, but a true nickel look. 
Gramlin going with a screen. And that's not going to work. Your bottom's pass complete to number four, Kevin Dominique. Big Stop hit. 38, Tariq Miller. It's Coming up by down. Tariq Miller. Cajuns had the nickel package in, and Miller came up and made the hit, and there were a lot of red jerseys around that receiver. Yeah, and saw another play by McDowell, too. He didn't bite on the super rusher as he he, he was let go, and he just turned and chased and was in there to help out Tariq Miller. But Tariq Miller is listed as the star, so he will come in in those nickel situations. Kevin Dominic made the catch, didn't have much of a chance to get anything going, as back to punt is going to be Miguel Mendez. Looks like there's uh, a flag, and Grambling might have gotten hit for a delay again. Defense, too many men oh, on the nope, field. illegal five substitution. So Four they'll down. move it up five yards. And that probably makes head coach Billy Napier gnash his teeth a little bit Tigers. because he is a stickler for guys handling their business and being at the right place at the right time. Well, you see that early. I mean, that, that's what you want to see coming out of this game is how few of those you have. It's been pretty clean to this point, but that, that was the one early thing that you tend to see. Mendez gets the kick away. It'll bounce, and Raheem Malone will get away from it. It's going to get a good roll down inside the Cajun 35, all the way down to the 30-yard line. Okay, good job by Mendez getting it down there. And Malone he needs to come up and get that. I mean, save that yard. 52 yards on the punt off the foot of Mendez, who is the kicker. Look at Louisiana, of course, had four straight bowl trips from 2011 to 2014. Since then, they've struggled, obviously. They've broken even in the Sun Belt, three straight losing seasons. And that's uh, one thing that Billy Napier trying to return to a winning attitude to this team. Similar okay. formation to the touchdown with the unbalance or to the long run prior to the touchdown with both receivers over in the unbalance. Much better job by the Gramlin front holding points. Cecil Cherry is there to make the stop on Trey Regis. Junior college transfer from Florida. Played at Coahoma Community College. Pick up of maybe one yard. It'll be second and nine. Barnes in motion to tight end. And Nunez will be back to throw again. Looking deep on the near side. He's got a man open and running under it and making the catch. Nunez pass completion yeah, number Marcus two. Marcus Had a Bradley. double move on there. Gramlin bit on the single and reading the scout report. The Cajuns were going to look for that early there because of all the man that Gramlin plays. And so had he bit on the inside move. Nunez takes him on the outside move. Cajuns going tempo a little bit here, but a little better throw. That goes for a touchdown. Bradley 39 catches last year, his first of the year. Regus up the middle, looking for running room, fighting for extra yards. He'll pick up about five. That's good to see for the Cajun fans, Trey Regas being able to physical it up in there, even with the loss of weight. I mean, he looked. We, we saw him in the spring, but, I mean, he, he cleaned up a lot. Now it looks good. Jalen Terrell there on the tackle as the Cajuns will have a second and five. This time it'll be Nunez, and he's got a hole at the 20, the 15. He is run out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Yeah, on the zone read that time, Andre does a good job pulling it out of there. You don't anticipate that out of him, but you see number two bites on the read, and there goes Andre making a big run out of it. He's athletic enough to make a big play out of it, but you just don't want him getting hit a lot. Got Curry and Fields is there to make the saving tackle. Cajuns with the first and 10 just outside the 10. This is Mitchell up the middle. Elijah Makes the spin. The He'll carry. be inside the five. Again, the Cajuns using tempo, Chris using Chris. formations. Got three receivers Second into the short two. side of the field and the back into the short side of the field. So that makes it tough for the defense to line up, trying to get the numbers out the front side into the wide side. Again, Cajuns going quick. Nunez and the throw on the far side. 50-50 ball is brought in by Bradley for the touchdown. Yeah, those guys make it really tough to play 50-50 against because they're so good on the outside. Marcus Bradley's going to win 90% of those against the people the Cajuns play. Pretty good defense by Trevon Callahan, but it was just a well-thrown ball by Nunez. Well, you Bradley see, knew it was coming. That's yeah, I difference. mean, it's all over it, but it was actually a run play call, and then he takes that if he wants it. Again, we, we wanted to, we were talking about formation into the boundary to set up that wide side of the field with one guy by himself. Kyle Fowle, transfer from Oklahoma. 
on for the extra point, up and good. The Cajuns, after going three and out their first series, strike back with two touchdowns here in the first quarter. 422 left here in the first period. Cajuns 14 and the Tigers three. And Gerald, this is uh, the first series. I think a lot of people were sort of, you know, on their seats waiting to see what's going to happen. The Cajuns have had them off those seats the last couple of drives. Well, I think, and, and, and you know, when you talk and you hear people, and I heard a lot of people talking about a lot of different teams here in the past week. So many of them said that, oh, we got to get off to an early start. We've got to get a good start early. got to get... Well, you know what? You just got to weather this start. Everybody's been working, waiting for the first game, and, you know, the emotion, the excitement, the anticipation, you just got to weather that. You talk about good starts. You see the Cajuns last year, you know, even with what was considered a disappointing year, they were only one win away from becoming bowl eligible. Yep. But, you know, they just the, – the excitement wasn't there. The excitement is back now. But you talk about – Good start. Grambling last year scored 261 points in the first half of their game. They, they averaged over 20 points in the first half last year. Yep. So they're used to getting out the fast start. So there's there's no uh, you know, no chance for the Cajuns to sort of sit back, even though they've got a quick 14 to three lead. Well, and I, I think your offense, you know, they kind of got punched. To be honest, got punched early as we see fouls kick. Uh, or that's Linden. I'm sorry, kicking it. Or is it foul? No, that was Linden kicking deep, yep. and out on the return is Brooks again, and he gets met hard just outside the 15-yard line. And Damian Brooks on the carry. Stop by number 43. I keep waiting to get that opportunity to Jordan talk about Cudino. the new rule on kickoffs because <laughs> we did so much homework on that, and uh, that hasn't even remotely come into play yet. Well, I, I know you'll remember a guy we had named Aaron Fisher. He'd come here from a junior college, and Fisher was a kick return guy, and we used to tell Fish, you take out everything. As long as you can catch it moving forward, hit it, run, and go with it. His opening kickoff is a Cajun. He took it. He was nine yards deep. Got out to the 21. Back then, that was a good deal. And the Tigers are going to make a change at quarterback. Alden Clark, product of New Orleans, a redshirt freshman. He played last year at Arkansas State, is in now. And the handoff up the middle is going to be Dominique, and he has met hard right at the line of scrimmage. Chauncey Moniak is there to close that hole up in a hurry. And we, we anticipated two quarterbacks playing for the Tigers. I don't think this has anything to do with Higbottom. I think this is just, uh, you know, Coach Nelson, Coach Fobbs wanted to get Clark in the game early and giving him a chance to see if he can make something happen. I know some of the coaches at Arkansas State were high on Clark when he first went there out of New Orleans. And he's got a second and long situation. Winds up the throw and it is tipped away. Yeah, trying to hit the curl route to the outside receiver out there for the Tigers. The pass was intended for Devon Lindsay. And knocking it away for the Cajuns was Jacques Boudreaux dropping back from the Mike Linebacker spot. Yeah, cut under it well, did a good job. As he was on his way to the flat receiver, he was able to get his hands up uh, uh, under that curl. So again, the Tigers face a third and long. Cajun showing pressure. Clark on the run. He will throw it away over the Cajun bench as Louisiana comes Watch with pass. pressure. Incomplete intended for number six, Landavian Brooks. It's yeah, both inside linebackers ten. come on an A-gap, double A-gap blitz that time, and a, 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 just a delay out of the second backer there. And Clark does a good job getting out, getting it gone, not taking any loss. In the pump for the Tigers is number 33, Miguel Mendez. So the Tigers will punt Back again. Let's see if Raheem judges this a little better. His coaches need to help him. I think they're trying to move him up just a little bit. And Another this one's going to be shanked off the side of the foot. No chance at that one for Raheem. That, 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 that's just a tough duty. Again, that's Mendez. Uh, Shanks it over toward the Cajun bench, and Louisiana is going to have great field position inside the Grambling 40. Yeah, now if you're the Cajuns, you really want to put the hammer down here. You, you want to get after them, get aggressive. You see what happened when the Cajuns come out and started with being physical up front running the football. And the Cajuns will also make their change at quarterback as Levi Lewis is going to see his first action of the year. And Lewis completed 51.9% of his passes for 377 yards last year, the second half of the season. 
And the left-hander, very mobile. He's going to look for a receiver now. He's going to tuck it and run, and he's going to make something out of he's nothing as he picks up about four. Yeah, Levi is a little bit shorter than, than Andre, right and, and he's got some athleticism. He's going to run with it. Had a shallow crosser from Jamarcus coming across. I'm sorry, Keenan Barnes coming across from the boundary. You see Lewis's numbers from last year. That's his passing numbers. He also rushed for 175 yards last year. Kale is the back, and he will get the handoff, taking it up the middle. And he'll come up about a yard and a half short of the first down. Pitchers will have a third and short as Jeremy Carter is there to make the tackle. It's third down and two. Again, the Cajuns show a lot of formation, a lot of heavy into the boundary. See what they can work to the wide side. Third and short. Colley's got the first down and a lot more. Again, a good seam opened up by the Louisiana offensive front. Colley takes it inside the 20. They're already the fourth running back for the Cajun. We talked with Coach DeBarge Luke, the running back coach for the Cajun. He talked about the depth of this running back position and said he anticipated seeing them all. You don't see many times where you can play four running backs in one quarter. Timeout, Grambling. The First Tigers are going to take a timeout to try to regroup a little bit, to try timeout. to keep the Cajuns out of the end zone. They don't want to fall down basically almost three touchdowns right here in the first quarter. Well, you know, and, and the Cajuns didn't get a turnover, but the punt, you know, coming off the side of the foot, it, it, it made it to where it was almost like a per, uh, turnover, such a short such a short kick, short field for the Cajuns. Billy Napier, the Cajun head coach, you see his resume. He's got a couple of national championship rings from Alabama. A lot of people don't talk about it very much, but that bottom line I think is key Napier was a heck of a quarterback when he played at Furman. And, you know, I always think that guys that play quarterback sort of understand the offense maybe even a little bit more than most. Well, and, you know, he comes in, and he's got a little bit of a cerebral uh, demeanor to him. Reminds me, Dan, a lot of Coach Nelson Stokely who was here a long time ago, and just in personality. Kale up the middle on first down. Tries to spin out carry. of a defender's hand, but John Keel Skipper not going to let him go anywhere. Big 310-pound senior nose guard out of Mississippi. Played at Jones County, a school that you know well. Yeah, I've been there more than once. Got a heck of a wild game supper out there during the springtime when you're out there recruiting the junior colleges. Gain of one for Kale, and now Jordan Wright checks in in the backfield, making his first appearance. This Cajun Running back core just very deep with experience. And now Lewis back to throw, throwing over the middle. He's got a receiver. He's got a touchdown. Yeah, got the crosser on the naked. Was looking at the tight end in the flat. The, the Gramlin jumped the tight end. Had the crosser coming from the back side. And another touchdown for the Cajuns here. Jamal Bell, a sophomore. Yeah, we're having to go deep into our roster for the Cajuns. Got a lot of guys playing in a lot of different positions, getting some reps. And there you see the tight end coming up, uh, back across off the fake. Good throw on the move by Levi. An 18-yard touchdown, the first career catch for Jamal Bell. As foul is on. Tacking on the extra point. Is up and good. And with yeah, we've three got a flag on the extra point, too, Dan. It might have to do with that leaping. Remember when we talked to the officials, they talked about leaping to us. Looked like Gramlin had a guy, may have gone up a little bit and come over the top and fallen on some of the linemen. There is no foul on the play for leaping. The guys are within one yard of the line of scrimmage. Well, you were, is good. You, you were right, but there was no foul. Apparently. But that's why it was thrown. But you can do it from the line of scrimmage. You can't do it from beyond the line of scrimmage. Pretty good performance by the Louisiana offense after the first possession when they had a loss of 10 yards and had to punt it away on fourth and 20 from deep in their own end. Now three possessions and three scores, and they've already got 184 yards of offense here in but the first quarter. But you know what not to go unnoticed, Dan? The first play of the game, Gramlin hits a big play. Cajuns kind of get shook a little bit, but go three and out after that. In the red zone, force the field goal, and since then, Gramlin's not gotten a first down. I mean, they, they held him to the three, to, you know, it was a four-play field goal drive, but those three plays force the field goal and come back three and out, Cage four, three and out, Cage four, three and out, Cage four. Linden will be in again to kick off, and the Tigers will send somebody else deep as uh, Malik Rout, sophomore wide receiver. Number six, Linden Brooks. 
And also Khalif Salmon back there, double deep now for the Tigers. Salmon's a starting wide receiver. This kick a little bit short. It's going to be handled. Looking for running room, and ouch. Yeah, there's some heavy-headed guys down there running the big collisions of all time. That would have been one where the, full, the, the fair catch could have come into play. Linden does a really good job getting hang time, and you see the Cajun kicking team. As soon as Grambling starts turning around, they're beyond them, and that's what you're looking for. Salmon took a really big pop. Yeah, I think. Offside, kicking team, number 23. Five yards, previous spot, free kick. Okay, Cage is going to have to do it again, though, because they had offsides. You know, that's Maybe a, that's why they got there beyond, before the guys could yeah. turn around. <laughs> May have been, but that's an example in that situation where the fair catch probably should have come into play. Sure. That's just going to be something you got to get used to, too, because you know, those guys are back there. They, they, that's the last thing they're thinking about is fair catching. I mean, most of those guys, they, they just want to go with it. So we will kick it again from back at the 30 this time. But I don't think anybody told Louisiana that we've got to re-kick it because kicking team's not back out there. Now they are. There we go. The Cajuns got to be careful. They haven't started the play clock, so giving the Cajuns a chance to get out there and get lined up. It will again be Salmon on the far side. And Malik Rout on the near side. Tiger still with the two deep. And Lyndon will put a foot into it from the 30. This will be Rout back at the four. He's got a seam on this side, but closed up pretty quickly by the Cajun defense. Stop by number 48, Vince Thomas. Vince Thomas is there First on the stop, Graham. senior from New Orleans. Yeah, Vince did a good job. Had a lot of space to make that play right there and, and uh, got him down in a wide open space. Best field position for Gramlin here in a little bit, so see if they can take advantage of it. The Tigers had about 60 yards on their very first possession. Since then, they are pretty much negative offensive yards as Clark will be back in for another series at quarterback. Dominique behind him in the pistol. And Cajuns are in their nickel personnel on defense. Dominique looking for some running room. Weaves back a little bit inside. He'll pick up about three. Justin Middleton's the guy that's there first for Louisiana. Middleton played in 10 games last year, had a start. Cajuns do not have a lot of returnees on this defensive unit. Well, he came in late, if you remember, got there right, Dan right, like two weeks before the season started and uh, got a lot of action in there, came out of Trinity Valley. Second down is Clark looking to the left side. He'll have it over complete. But again, a short gain as Daryl Clark, the Y receiver from New Orleans, product of Warren Easton, a returning starter, makes his first catch of the night. Yeah, if you're grambling, you'd like to see that ball caught and, and stay on your feet, gain some more yards after it's the catch. It's third down and five. Third and five for the Tigers. They haven't had a first down in a good while. Dominique on the side as back to throw and wrapped up and brought down. Yeah, nice job on the blitz right there. For Farai Garner comes from the inside, but they get the loop coming from the outside out for two inside pressures, and that's Benny Higgins finishing it off. We talked about getting free, you know, but it's one thing to get free. It's another thing to finish with a sack. End of the first quarter. Benny Higgins with the stop, and that's going to end our first quarter. Cajuns 21, Tigers 3. Back with the second quarter in just a moment. Live from Cajun Field. Grill just 399 bucks. ESPN College Game Day. Built by the Home Depot. September 10th on ESPN. The Tigers will have to punt it away on the first play of the fourth quarter as Louisiana 
with a big first period. They lead it 21 to 3. And Gerald, they've used that dual quarterback situation they talked about and used it very effectively. Yeah, the Cajuns have, as you know, Gramlin's done it also, but the Cajuns were able to get scores with both quarterbacks in there once they really started leaning on the big guys. I mean, put the run game into play, and then the quarterbacks were able to get the easy throws. Mendez to punt. Malone is the deep man. And he'll call the fair catch and take it inside his own 40. And the Cajuns again will start off with very good field position. Well, that's the thing is the field position's been all Cajun so far. I mean, but but Gramlin's having a fight with a punt. And the Cajuns have been, been able to do it after scoring drive, so they've been able to get kickoffs in there. But we'll see who comes out for the Cajuns. Looks like Nunez is going to come back for the Cajuns at quarterback. And, again, the Cajuns have gone through four or five maybe running backs in here. But the thing that's been consistent is those front five. I mean, they've done a nice job handling the the stuff that, that Grambling is throwing at you uh, inside with all the movement. Nunez, four out of six, 71 yards and one score so far. Malone goes in motion, and he'll get the toss on the left side. Look for a block. He'll take it himself. He'll pick up about eight or nine. Yeah, went down out there, and, and again, that was a run play with a bubble tag on the outside of it. So the Cajun offensive line blocking the run. You see the pullers coming off the gap scheme. Nunez throws it to the outside. Now all you got to do is block the little guys. Damian Cremiti makes the tackle out there, second and short. And Gramlin does a better job. Dan, I, I'm looking, but he's not back in there. Percy Cargo went out early for Gramlin, one of their Stop better inside linebackers, and, and he has not made a return yet point. for them. That's got to hurt the Tigers. Big nose guard John Kill Skipper makes the tackle third and short. It'll be Regus again, and he will bounce it outside. He's found some running room. He is going to take it. Foot race inside the 15, inside the 10. Trey Regus on the carry. Yeah, Gramlin trying to commit extra people to the run. One thing about that, if you do split it, there is no third level. So it's one thing to get past the second level. You'll see the lineman covering up Gramlin. So they're all the white shirts are buried, and he really just runs into his own guy, and then two other guys miss, and, and, and there he goes, no third level. Cole Prudham sort of screened off his man, and Trevon Callahan had to run down Regis inside the 10. Mitchell on the carry this time, not much. Nice stop defensively that time by, by our man Darius Christmas. Yeah, good player. And we, we talk about him in the open. He, this is the last time you're going to say his name. I mean, he's just too active. And he's going to try and mirror the back on the inside. He won't bury his eyes. Swack defensive player of the year last year. Led the Tigers in tackles. Made an awful lot of big plays. Second and goal just inside the 10. Mitchell's the back. Nunez still has it. Throw over the middle is Colt. Pass complete to number two, Jamarcus Bradley with his second touchdown of the night. Again, that was a run and play called, and you saw that, that Nunez pulled the ball out of the back's belly. The back wanted it, but he pulled the ball out of the back's belly, hit the slant for the touchdown. Four straight touchdown possessions for the Cajuns, and you see Nunez, that was just a cool settling into the pocket. He had good protection, and Bradley just beat his man to the inside. But Mark's good enough to, to make the plays in there, and, and, and he just once he's able to shake, he bodies his way through it and doesn't run himself covered either. Kyle Fowl on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Koa Haynes. Up and good. And the Cajuns have broken this one open. 28-3 to in front of a good crowd here tonight at Cajun Field. You're up 28-3 or down 28-3. The Tiger band's going to have a lot of fun. I tell you, I'm glad they're here. I mean, we, we saw it a couple years ago. We had Southern come in and, and had Southern's band, but I'm anxious to see Grandma's band down here too. Calvin Linden with the kickoff, and it is taken by Simone. He's taken on the right side, finds a little bit of a seam. He'll be out to about the 25. Kickoff taken by number 16. Speck spotted right at the 25-yard line. Tigers. We'll try to get something going offensively. They've been limited to only 52 offensive yards in the first period. And 40-plus were on the first play of the game. And so, you know, that's the thing. I think it's Higbottom coming back in, I believe. Yeah, other than that 47-yard completion from Higbottom to Geis, 
the Tigers have a net of five offensive yards. And it is Hickbottom back in at the quarterback spot. And a new back in the backfield, John Tavius Robinson, a junior from Atlanta. In fact, a two in the backfield. This is Robinson. He's finding a little bit of a hole. Yeah, Deuce Wallace filling from the safety spot. As you see the two backs in the backfield, you get the lead guy blocking for the other guy on the edge. Deuce has got a fill from his secondary, from his safety position. Does a good job getting up in there. Grambling gets five on first down on the run. They've got to like that if you're a Tiger fan. Second down and five. Robinson's just 5'8". He's sort of the bowling ball type, but you saw he had a little bit of burst of speed that time. Hick bottom over the middle and into the hands. Uh, KJ at the corner that time. Johnson, yep. the, the Lafayette kid, does a good job on the slant. On an island out the backside. Had three receivers to the top. Backside slant down here. Got to get this, get his hand in there without interfering. And does. Clinton Geist was open for just a second, but Kendall Johnson did a good job of closing that up, batted it away, and now the Tigers again with a third down situation. This is a big conversion for the Tigers trying to keep this drive alive. You just need something positive to happen. Hadn't had a first down since the first play of the game. Third and five as Hickbottom is back to throw on the near side, and it is complete. Yeah, good throw and catch right there. He got the speed out on the boundary that time. Tough to cover. They didn't know that, that Kendall had jumped that slant that time, so you take the out away from him right there. You got to make a good throw, and, and Hickbottom did. Nice grab by Geis, and he's a little bit gimpy as he's headed to the sideline. Geis had that 47-yard touchdown grab on the second play of the ball game. But since then, the Tigers haven't had a lot of offense going, but they did just pick up another first down. That's only their second first down of the game. Hand off to Robinson going on the right side. And he'll pick up about two. Yeah, tried to, tried to get a little gap scheme going on a power pole by the backside guard that time and just weren't able to get the Cajuns off their point. Gerald McDowell making the tackle on that side. The... Uh, Left side defensive end, the Ole Miss transfer that we've talked about before. He called his name a couple times in the past part of it and now in the run game. Second and eight for Hickbottom. Good power run that time on the sweep, and that is Brooks again. Yeah, Brooks rolled his pass well, ran through the tackle of Zion Hill on the backside of it. Hill had him at the line of scrimmage. He just couldn't hold on. Brooks, a junior from Austin, Texas. He's a thick trunk kid now. You, you, you got to get him off his feet. Third and short for the Tigers. Hick bottom in the gun. He'll throw it on third down. Now take it up the middle. Nice move to evade some Cajun defenders. And he's found a seam and he is still going. Tariq Miller has to run him down inside the five-yard line. That's one thing that happens. If you're in man coverage that time and the quarterback ends up splitting your front, there is no other level. You see the Cajuns bring five, six on that time, and they don't stay in their lanes. Hickbottom's able to split that seam and then take a big run out of it. That's what the Tigers were looking for, a little momentum, a little something to get them going here. Grambling needed something to shake up him offensively. They had been struggling. On those last three drives, three and outs. But now they've got it deep in Cajun territory. They'll have it first and goal at the three. And Hickbottom still trying to get the call from the sidelines. And yeah, play caught longest... down inside of five, getting ready to be inside. Going to have to call timeout out of it. The Tigers will take a timeout. Timeout, gambling. Second charge timeout. 30 seconds. The timeout. Longest. Penetration, deepest penetration for the Tigers tonight. You know, we talked about the grambling in the pregame, Dan, and losing their offensive coordinator. I see Coach Fobbs down on the sideline, and, and he's having to call the plays. There's Coach Reggie Nelson down there with him. Coach Nelson's an offensive line guy. As I said, he was a heck of a high school player down in Alexandria. Played at McNeese, and then played several years in the NFL. That's where he and Coach Fobbs got together. They would work together at McNeese. But uh, this, is, this is all new for them, too. Our producer, Kevin Wilson, likes that last line out there. They're 10-1 and one under Fobbs in games that start at 6 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. 
Uh, he's done a fantastic job, as we said several times, getting getting Gramlin back where they, you know, where they, let's let's say where they're supposed to be in this ride. Hickbottom with the heavy package, he will roll out to the left, and he's got a wide open man and dropped it. Yeah, oh, it's a shame. Had a really nice call on the naked that time. Had the receiver come out on the high. Had the back on the low. Had the back wide open right there. Sometimes those are the hard ones when you're just wide open by yourself. John Tavius Robinson was as open as he's going to be all season long and just could not handle the throw. A little bit down on his hip a little bit, but still a catch you just have to make. Yeah, and, and, and Jeremy did a good job. You know, those aren't the easiest ones to throw either when the guy's that wide open. Gave him a chance for it, and he just got to make that play. And he was rolling to his left and throwing with, from the right hand. It is a difficult throw, but he had it there. Second and short. Hand off on the right side. Cajuns will stack up. Fighting, fighting, fighting is Dominique. He'll pick up a yard where it looked like he was going to get nothing. Yeah, he earned every bit of what he got. Not a bad job up front, but there you see the Cajuns filling it, and he just running through it, running through it, continuing to churn. Goal. Kendall Johnson was in the middle of that tackle along with a couple of other Cajuns. Yeah, Cole Haynes going from his back end also. It's a big play for the Tigers. If you want to get back in it, you don't want to settle for a field goal here. You had the big play. You got to finish it off for the touchdown. Play clock is down to 10. Hick bottom puts somebody in motion. He'll keep it himself, and now we, we flag that comes stop, before. Yeah, that's a procedure in there. And that is a tough call for the Tigers. False start. Offense, 88. Five-yard penalty. Play third down. You know, the th tough thing, Dan, is everybody sees the play clock. Everybody on offense, you see the play clock right in front of you. You know that you've got to pick up the pace and you're anticipating the snap and all that. You kind of get that little bit of itch you want to go. And uh, can't do that. Got to wait for the hike. Only the second penalty of the game on the Tigers. And it will be third in goal, but now we'll be from back at the seven. And again, we've got a stoppage. Really not sure why. I, I keep looking at the stripes. We'll wind it. Gets noisy at Cajun Field on third and goal from the seven. Hickbottom looking for a receiver, throws it in the back of the end zone, and is caught. We got a hat down, so I don't know if a guy went out of the back of the end zone, came back in and touched it. We'll see if, if, if that happens from the, from the official to back judge back here. That is the discussion as the completion was to Kobe Ross. Now, yeah, now we just had a flag drop. So what they're talking about is, is whether he can come back in and be the first to touch it or not. Ross had 11 catches last year. The sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, played a good bit as a freshman. And now they're going to look at it. And, of course, we do have replay. I don't know if this is one of the replay opportunities. We'll wait and see what the call is on the field first. Yeah. I don't know that they need. I think they're just discussing what they saw down there and making sure the communication goes. Illegal touching. Offense. Yeah. Number six. That's what it is. Illegal Not touching from my referee, touching. Jeremy Parker. Previous spot. Loss of down. Fourth down. And yeah, that just is also, goes an incomplete yeah, pass. Right. That's also a loss of down. Yeah. So it's going to be fourth down, and the Tigers looks like they're going to send in the field goal unit. Yeah, disappointing if you're Gramlin because of the, the false start on third down. You backed yourself up, put it, made it a tough situation. Then you get the completion. You think you've got the touchdown, but, you know, you really don't. So, Well, I say field goal unit, but the Tigers look like they're lined up offensively, and they're going to yep. go for it here on fourth down. I guess they figure, you know, you're 25 down early, midway through the second quarter. You've got to score a touchdown here. Yeah, it got to rally. I mean, you need something positive to come out of the Cajuns bringing pressure. Hickbottom looking for an opening. He's got an opening, and he is going to take it into the end zone. And that's what you want to see your quarterback do. As soon as you see the Cajuns go, man, if he can get out there, he's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Heck, nobody. So he's going to go in there and force his way into the end zone. Good play by Hickman. Using his athleticism, Cajuns came with pressure, but he's able to get outside. Yeah, Benny, Benny Higgins, Higgins got coming. close. Yep. 
but but I think good job by the Grambling offensive line picking up the initial pressure. Now you know the Cajuns are going to try and outnumber him, which they did. Higgins comes late, but he just doesn't have enough jet to keep up with Higbottom. Now Grambling's having problems getting their personnel on the field for the extra point. Garrett Urban is into attempt the extra point. He had the field goal earlier, and the Tigers running somebody else on out of the hold of Mendez. And they're going to have to hurry as the play clock's down to three. Snap is down, and the kick is up and good. Eight twenty-eight left in the second quarter in this one, and the Tigers are on the board with a touchdown. But the Cajuns still lead it 28 to 10 on our opening night of college football. Chicken it is. Chick-fil-A nuggets make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. The Tigers get on the scoreboard, and they do it on the feet and the legs of quarterback Jeremy Hickbottom. Found a seam in the Cajun defense and dove into the end zone. Yeah, had the long run on the scramble early in the drive to get him into the red zone and then finished it himself. I like the call by Coach Bobbs. I mean, going for it on fourth, it's not like it was inside the five. Now it's fourth and goal from the seventh that they go for it and then rely on their big quarterback to be athletic enough to go in there and, and go get it. Miguez to kick off. Kale on the far side. Trey Regas on the near side. Kale's going to take it in the end zone, and he'll take a knee, and the Cajuns will start at the 25 on the touchback. Kale on the touchback. First and 10. Okay, now if you're the Cajuns on offense, you want to see, can you answer that Gramlin score up? I mean, I, I know that the Cajuns have, you know, once the first drive, you know, struggled on the first drive, they've been able to finish everything, up, everything else with a kick, and, and that's what you want to see. But now can you do it here? Andre Nunez back in at quarterback. He's got Jordan Wright in the backfield with him. Nunez six out of eight so far, 87 yards and two hook, two hookups for touchdowns. Had some opportunities there. Both the touchdowns were on run calls with a play tag. This is Wright. Power back up the middle. He will go get three, Jordan maybe even Wright four. Yeah, getting off that left side again, getting Number some push, staying left that time, and, and just trying to get some push. Again, when the Cajun offensive line is able to be aggressive, they, they've handled the movement of the Gramlin front. Diarius Christmas has a lot of tackles already. He was the first guy there for the Tiger defense. Nunez outside, looks like Patterson, but a nice play on the outside that time by Kenan Fontenot. Product of Blake Charles made a nice play from the safety spot. Yeah, Fontenot beat the block of the Cajun receiver that time. Again, a run call with a play tag on the end of it. You can throw it. Everybody likes to use the term RPOs. You know, nowadays that's that's kind of the thing in vogue. Uh, I think I told you then, Barry Wilson had that in the Cajun offense in, in 1986, and we didn't call it an RPO then. Empty backfield for Nunez on third and a long five. He's going for a bundle, throwing downfield, and it's going to be incomplete, but here comes the flag. Well, and, and you know the Cajuns That's are going to take some chances. Grandma's going to place a man on the outside. We saw some of the stuff that they were looking at to where we felt like the Cajuns felt like they could double move Gramlin and get them to buy it early, and, and that's what happened there. Forced the, either the catch or the inter interference That's call. interference. Damien Kermite is Number trying four. to apply the defense. Kermite's 5'11". Kenan Touchdown. Barnes is a tall 6'3". Yep. And he's the guy who made a living last year going up and grabbing 50-50 balls. Well, and, and when you have that size advantage, it's it's really not 50-50. You know, you'd like to see Andre keep that ball in play because you do get the penalty, but but if it's thrown in bounds, then, then you can get that catch and you gain about another 15 yards. First down for Louisiana at its own 45. Nunez again to throw. Complete on the right side, fumbled, but it goes out of bounds. Pass was complete to Jamal Bell. And Bell out there by himself that time, just throwing a catch again. Play tag on the back of you. See the offensive line being aggressive with the run. Nunez makes a nice throw out there. Gives Bell a chance to get it in space. Makes somebody miss, but you see the ball changing hands. Just got to be more secure. Kenan Fontenot again on the stop, the redshirt freshman. He did play in one game last year before ended up redshirting the rest of the year. He's just going to need to get their formation straight. Nunez calling some signals, and now he's got Williams on the move across and goes to Kale up the middle. 
and he powers his way for a first down on second and short. We saw the Cajuns have a penalty earlier with an illegal shift, moving the tight end from one side and then bringing motion after. They're going to have to do it again. Here's another interesting look. Now, you got the left tackle is actually playing the right tight end. The only thing on the left side of the center is one guard. And the Cajuns come that way to Kale, but the Tigers have it sniffed out that time. Yeah, and, and, and Gramlin was able to recognize it in time to shift their front. All you got to do is reestablish the center. So you make the, the right guard, the center, just move everybody over. You see Gramlin getting there. DeAndre Hose right there in the middle of it again. He was the Tigers' second leading tackler last year. Junior out of Mobile. And he is very mobile. Nunez to throw on the outside. He's got Keenan Barnes again. Short gain, or rather, gain is short of a first down, but at least put the Cajuns in third and decent situation. But you see the cushion that Barnes has now. He just sticks out there. Fontenot giving him plenty of room after that one deep ball. I mean, you got plenty of room out there. Just throw it, catch it, and then now get, cut the, get the distance cut in half. Devonner Martin on the tackle. Third and four for the Cajuns inside the Tiger 40. Quick handoff, it's Regus. Regus bounces off one defender, leans forward. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Much better job by Gramlin not sitting back. They're being aggressive, getting after that Cajun offensive line. Again, an unbalanced formation for the wide side of the field. Cajuns decide to come back to the short side of it. Now I'm going to go for it on fourth down. It was Hogs again on the tackle. Fourth and about a yard and a half. Nunez right now trying to draw the Tigers off. He's still got 15 on the play clock. And now the Cajuns are going to take yep. the timeout. We'll take a break. Four minutes and 55 timeout. seconds left before halftime. Louisiana. Cajuns on the march. They lead it 28 to 10. Cajuns with an 11 to 3 advantage in first downs, but right now they face a fourth and about a yard and a half, and Nunez under center for the first time tonight. Regus is deep in the backfield, and now they shift back. Alex Allen is the front man. And again, trying to draw the Tigers offside. Good discipline by the Tiger defense. Yeah, showing, showing a lot of shifts, a lot of motion and stuff, just trying to get somebody to get Gramlin to jump. And now, timeout. Kind of burn one there for the Cajuns. Good timeout. job by Gramlin, as you said. We talked about Broderick Probs a little bit in the pregame show, and of course we talked about the success that he's had with the Tiger program. And I think he mentioned it once, but actually got his coaching start right here at Cajun Field. His first couple years as a college coach. Yeah, was a right here. assistant on, on Jerry Baldwin's staff back here for the Cajuns. And then we've been knowing Coach Bob's a long time. I mean, like he said of his whole career, he's only been outside the state of Louisiana one year, and that was at Southern Miss. And ended up at well, two there from McNeese back to McNeese. And the Cajuns come out, line up, and go for it again for fourth down here. Part of his success, Dan, is who he's got a defense coordinator too, Coach Everett Todd. And uh, this is a big down for, for Gramlin to try and get this stop. Nunez takes a snap. Regus, and he is hit at the line of scrimmage, and I don't think he got there. I don't think so. I think Chris that's a really good job here. by the Gramlin second-level guys piling up and stopping it. And there's your boy Christmas right up in the middle of it, and, and we figured he'd be there. I mean, if the ball's going to be close, it, then Christmas is going to be around. Turnover on downs, first and ten Gramlin. So the Cajuns come up short on their first fourth down attempt of the year, and the Tigers will take over at their own 34. You see and Cajuns running left, and, and just a good job coming off the block by, by the Gramlin nose guard in there. And, and, you know, he's able to, as we said, it's one thing to be there. It's another thing to finish it, and he was able to do that. And that skipper up in there mentioned his name several times, and 300 pounds plus. You know, it's one thing to be 300, but when you're only six foot, I mean, it's tough to get leverage on a guy like that. So the Tiger offense that generated a touchdown, their last possession, will take over once again, first and ten. And again, it's Hickbottom back in at the quarterback spot. And Robinson at the running back spot and throwing downfield and overthrowing the receiver is Hickbottom as they tried to go 
upstairs on first down. Same thing we saw early in the game. Yeah, same thing we saw early in the game for, for Grandma trying to get the ball inside, uh, just up the seam and get the ball deep down the field. Clark started all 13 games last year out of uh, Warren Easton High in New Orleans, senior. He led the team with 44 catches last Clinton. year. Of course, he had Devontae Kincaid throwing those passes to him last yeah, year. Yeah, really two, good player. Two, I tell you, two-time SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. Hick Bottom's got a skill set, though, that I think Coach Fobbs is going to be glad he's got with him. This is Robinson, and not going to find a lot of room up the middle that time. And I think that was John Benny Higgins, Higgins who was right there. Nope, not Higgins. It was uh, Malbrew. Stop by number 35, Malbrew. We'll see where Malbrew came from. You see, he came from the right side, and... And it clocks things up. When you and I were watching the film, we talked about whether or not to take it on with your inside shoulder or outside shoulder. He did a good job getting underneath the puller and canceling that gap out and then was able to make the play. Third and long for the Tigers. Hick bottom on the scramble, throw downfield. He's going to overthrow a receiver who was That's open for just a second. 16, Khalif Simmons. Sims was the yeah. intended receiver. Salmon, rather, was the intended receiver, but... A little bit of a miscommunication as uh, Hickbotham thought he was going outside, and he turned it inside, and it's going to be a fourth down. So, Well, early in the season, scramble rules are something that you've got to kind of rep and, and get into play. Once quarterback breaks contain who goes where and Tigers, when, it just depends on where you are in the levels and the layers of the field. Hickbotham got outside the pocket and was trying to throw the ball into an open area. Better by the Cajun front, not giving up the big run off the scramble. Mendez to punt again, and Raheem Malone, the transfer from SMU who caught 44 passes last year is in rugby style kick and Malone will let it hit and it's going to take a Cajun I think that time. ball may have hit the Cajun defender on the heel as he was blocking down there and, and, and trying to see but it, the way it bounced it looked like it came off of off of the Cajun guy and that's no not indication something. yet that's not something you can blame anybody as he's running down the field. I think that's Michael Jaquette who's just running with the guy. Punt is down at the 28-yard line. First and 10, Louisiana. Cajuns will take over at the 26. And that may be reviewed. I, I, I see the um, Everybody yeah, the strikes are ready to put it to play. So. Yeah, the Tiger bench is not happy with that one. Yep. I don't know if we got a good look at it or not. We'll try to see. see. I, again, I think this is Michael Jaquette running with the gunner. And I don't know. That's really hard to see. But just the way it came off, it just looked like it. It could have just been where the ball was checking up anyway. Nunez takes a snap in the empty backfield. Rowing to throw and has it out here complete to Malone. He picks up Maybe about eight up to, to the 35. 13, yeah, sprint out on the outside that time. Flood concept. Got three receivers out there. One going to the top of it. Another guy going medium. Another guy going shallow. Left side safety, Chris Grant. Product of Shreveport. Bird high. Junior makes the stop for the Tigers. Second and short. Again, Nunez. This time to Bradley. Bradley threading his way through some defenders, Nunez and he's got it up to, to the Jamarcus Cajun Bradley 45. Getting yeah, the Cajun offense, blocking the run play with the little uh, bubble or the play tag on the outside. We see the ball coming out of it here on Nunez. Good, accurate throw. Those throws look easy, but you got to give the receiver. you got to throw it where he can catch it and move. That's the whole purpose of it. One of the big guys, Cameron Richardson, out to make the tackle on the outside. First and 10 at the 44. Nunez again to throw. He's got some pressure inside, and he's going to be sacked. Now, Cajun's trying to get the ball deep off the play action, and that time, you know, Grandma, like we had said earlier, they're going to feast their famine. If they can get you in the backfield, they will. I mean, they're playing it on the go. Well, Alan Clark had 11 sacks last year at the defensive end. He's got his first of the year here. He had 11 and a half tackles for loss last year, and 11 of those were sacks. So second and long. Nunez to throw again. This time he targets the tight end, Matt Barnes. Nunez pass complete. Yeah, good catch throw. You don't have to hold it long. Just get it off, get it gone. And Barnes does a good job. You know, Matt's guy that we've heard his name through the preseason camp has done some good things. So good to see him get off to a good start. Third and eight as Louisiana plays tempo again. Mitchell is the running back. Nunez is going to take it himself, and he's got some running room. He's past midfield, and he's down to the Tiger 
the 41-yard line. Yeah, call draw that time. Mitchell was up there to leave blocking for him, so he just called quarterback draw. Gramlin blitzes themselves out of it. Taking a page out of his compatriot Levi Lewis's book as Nunez runs for the first down. This time it's Mitchell who gets the carry, powers forward. Tigers bottle him Mitchell up quickly that time. Yeah, it's good to see Elijah in there. You know, we heard all the talk about him in camp, about the foot injury. Could he come back? I know all the rehab he's done, all the time he spent with Brian Sonia getting ready, and, and uh, he's done a really nice job of, of getting himself ready to go. Darius Christmas is there again to make the tackle. Second and long for the Cajuns inside the final 90 seconds of the first half. Nunez again to throw. He'll go out on the right side. It's complete. There's a flag down on the far side. Completion to Malone. We'll see what the penalty is. Nunez pass complete to number 13. Devanna Martin. Martin. A lot of that time, a lot of times when it's out there like that, it's an alignment issue. But uh, see Nunez giving it to him good to where he can make something happen with it. Flag was right at the line of scrimmage. So we will await the call from this Sunbelt crew, not a lot of penalties so far in the game for an it's opening been pretty game. Clean. Yeah, we had a couple of little substitution issues with, you know, maybe the Cajuns got caught with 12 one time, Gramlin got caught short one time in a kicking situation, which that happens early in the year. Offside. Defense, Defense. number 44. Our referee, Jeremy Parker, says offsides against the Tigers. Brandon Varner, the defensive end on the right side, was the uh, guilty party. Well, the reason I said it was an alignment issue because it happened right when the ball was snapped. It's only a penalty Offside. if the ball is snapped because the defense 44. can always back up. Penalty. Previous spot, second down. So it goes from a second and eight to a second and three. All spotted at the 34-yard line. That coach second Everett Todd, three. now we showed him down there on the sideline, defense coordinator. Dan, you know he played at Rice when we played against him in, in uh, Cajun's first game as a Division One school. Nunez with the snap. Grambling brings pressure. Throw is out on the right side, and the catch is made by Jamarcus Bradley. Nunez pass complete to number two, Jamarcus Bradley. Bradley with his fifth catch of the night. And that's another Louisiana. Devon Cherry is there defensively, but not a lot he could do about that one as that one was just thrown on the money. Yep, got it up a little bit. Get down, get the feet down. Now that we're at one minute part, so if you're with the Cajun, you're going to score with the ball in your hand. Gramlin will start the second half with the ball. Pressure coming from the outside as Nunez lays it up. Going for Patterson. Just a little bit too far defended Nunez down there by a couple complete. of the Tigers. Chris Grant was one of the guys down there, the left side safety. Yeah, he got man coverage, true man coverage on the outside. Need to make this Jared throw and catch. See some. Uh, Second down and 10. Actually, it was Jared Jackson. Bam Jackson was down the intended target. Yeah, noticing that left tackle for the Cajuns now is the true freshman, Max Mitchell. Heard a lot of good things about him in the Neville product, Neville High School in Monroe. Nunez gets rid of it quick. Bradley again on the catch. Sidesteps one. Gramling has a few more friends show up around the football, and now a big push forward on the scrum. Nunez pass complete to number two, Jamarcus Bradley. Cajuns only have one timeout left, so... Yeah, you like to see that. You just don't like to see that when you're running, your clock's running here down inside of a minute left to go in half. Three. Third down and short for the Cajuns, about three yards as Nunez wants the ball. Throw outside, complete to Johnny Lumpkin. Nunez pass complete to number 88. Lumpkin with the catch Johnny for the first Lumpkin. down, and more importantly, he gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 24 seconds left. Yeah, good job by Johnny right there. Big old target now, Dan. We've seen him a little bit. 6'6", Cat. Trevon Callahan from my hometown, Jonesboro, Louisiana, makes the stop. First and ten for the Cajuns. Nunez to throw, throwing on the outside. He's got Malone out of bounds inside the Nunez five. Nunez pass complete to number 13, Raheem Malone. I am impressed with Nunez's accuracy so far tonight, Gerald. Yeah, he's letting it go. And, and the thing is, and not just, you know, he's accurate with it. He's giving his guys a chance to catch it and make something happen with it. That time that ball is thrown behind, Raheem gets tackled inbounds. You've got to burn a timeout. First and goal at the four. First and goal, Louisiana. Only 18 seconds left. And Louisiana with no timeouts, but still has 10 on the game clock or on the play clock. 
Yeah, it just got a restart on the play clock up to 25. So. Nunez on the draw again. He'll take it outside, and he will get Nunez into the end keeps. zone. What an athletic move by Andre Nunez. Yeah, for the guy who's not supposed to be the athlete of the two quarterbacks, Andre's done a really nice job with his feet tonight. And uh, he, that was really good, Dan. Grambling brought a lot of inside pressure that time. He was able to bounce. This is a pre-call draw. This draw all the way. Make somebody miss and then go hit the pylon. Do what you got to do. Get in. Nice block right at the goal line that gave Nunez just enough room to get to the pylon. So Andre Nunez, he had one touchdown rushing last year. He's got that in the opening game this season. Kyle Fowl, the transfer, the product of Klein, Texas, transfer from Oklahoma. Graduate transfer in to try his fifth extra point of the night. This one's up and good. Kick is up and good, and with 11 seconds left in the first half. Cajuns do exactly what you said they needed to do, Gerald. Score with the ball in their hands right at the end of the half. Yeah, trying to burn the clock. And here we see it, and, and sees the pylon right there. Got to get the ball in the end zone. Is able to do it as he flips over to the backside of it. All he's got to do is break it. But I tell you, that you know, that's the thing that, that, that Coach Napier talked about. Andre, I don't want to say cerebral, maybe a little bit, kind of. But uh, that'll get your guys to rally now. Devon or Martin had a shot at him, but just got there a little bit too late as Nunez goes just inside the pylon. Cajuns have scored on five of their seven possessions here in the first half. Yeah, done a really good job, especially after the way they started. You know, started out the first drive with just about, you know, other than turning it over, it's about as bad as you could start with negative 10 yards. But since, it's, it's been a really nice job by the offense. See some other Sunbelt scores today. And look at that score. Appalachian State was leading Penn State for a long time in that game at University Park. But the 10th ranked rank Nittany Lions come back to win in overtime, 45-38. to A little surprised at that Boise score. That's a tough trip for somebody from Boise to get all the way to Troy and have that kind of lead against Troy. Okay, well, I think Boise is going to be that team to watch in the group of five this year as the short kickoff is handled yeah, Linden that time by Simon. Linden that time decided to go more with the line drive kick. Had done a really good job with the sky kicks, keeping Grambling, Grambling inside the 25 up until this point. First and 10, Grambling. Simon gets it back up to the 31-yard line, but only three seconds left on the clock, and I don't know if the Tigers will take any chances here. Probably just yeah, kneel on the, and try to regroup. You get the ball to start the second half, so no sense in doing anything. Just just kind of get out there, get get out there and get out of here. Gramlin knows about running up the, this tunnel. Now, this tunnel right here for the Cajuns is long and, and elevating stuff, but it's got nothing on the Gramlin Hill back there at Eddie Robinson Stadium. You talk about a hill that will win you at half. Andre Nunez is 16 of 19 in the first half for 151 yards and the two touchdowns and also the, the one the touchdown rushing. And Pickbottom just kneels on the football. And it's a big first half for the Cajuns. Louisiana leads grambling 35 to 10 on this hot and muggy night in South Louisiana.
Maytag was named the number one top load agitator washer by a leading consumer magazine. The return is Khalees Seymour. by number 10, Malik Round. Nope, check that. That was... Stop by number 18, Yep, that was Route Washington. on the return. First and 10, Grambling. In the 23 yard line. And he'll get it back up to the 23, and that's where the Tigers will take over. The Cajuns with over 340 yards offense in the first half. The Tigers with 132. Yeah, and that's coming down after the first series where the Cajuns were minus 10 on their first series of plays. You mentioned the four straight possessions there, but it really got going, and then the Cajun defense was able to make things happen after giving up the big play on the first down. Hit the bottom back in at quarterback, hit bottom back in at quarterback, and, and we saw Jeremy do some really good things with his legs uh, late in the, second, in the first half. Provided the Tigers only touchdown, throwing deep this time and finding his man complete. Catch is made by Kobe Ross. Yeah, Ross on the corner route right there. You'd like to see Jeremy hit him in stride a little bit so he can get it going. Ross does a good job shaking and getting himself open. And a good job going down and getting the ball. Blair Brooks, the weak side safety, was the deep man. First and ten for the Tigers. Higbottom on the handoff this time. Robinson will get the carry. He'll pick up a couple. He is... In the grasp of Benny Higgins. Yeah, Benny Higgins and KJ, uh, Kendall George, uh, Johnson on the outside making his play from the corner. Stop position. For 15, Benny Higgins. Gerald, you mentioned that first possession. The Cajuns were minus 10 yards. They then scored on their next four possessions. They drove 81, 70, 38, and 62. Turned it over on downs once and then had a 74-yard drive right at the end of the half. Second and nine. Hickbottom throwing on the near side overthrowing his receiver Ross. Got a late flag coming in there. You see Tariq Miller coming from the star position trying to undercut the out route right there. Just shy of the pick. Okay, whatever it is, they're waving it off. I'm, I'm really not sure. Now they're picking up the flag. Pass interference. Offense, 82. Penalties declined. Third down. Well, that may have been why Ross was open. Well, and then, you know, I mentioned the word pick. Nine. I mean, you know, when you're on offense, you call it a rub or a mess. You don't use that P word on defense. They keep saying, oh, they're picking us. Both teams are playing a lot of man, so you want to do some things to, to, to get some crossers or to make some people or to exchange levels on that to try and open guys up. It was Devontae Davis on the – was on the receiving end as this one is again targeting Davis out here on the far side, but yeah, another under one big of, pressure from uh, was Hickbottom. A double screen, so they were releasing the offensive line, was releasing the defensive line, had a swing to the top, had, had a, a tunnel screen coming back from the bottom, and uh, just a little bit too high. Again, that was Benny Higgins in there providing some pressure. Really like the way Higgins moves for a guy. He's that spark plug kind of guy too, Gerald. Six foot, 266 pounds. Yeah, a big junior college acquisition. Sometimes it's good just to be thick. You know, you don't need to be tall. Just be thick, and it causes enough problems. Mendez is back to punt. Malone is again deep. Trying to get it in the corner. Malone is going to let it go, and it's going to take a tiger bounce, and it's going to be down inside the five-yard line. Good job on the coverage by, by Gramlin and a really good job by Mendez. He, I mean, he used that rugby but was able to get it out there on a, with a spiral. Did a good job. The linebacker Jeremy Carter is down to make the uh, kill it at the two-yard line. The Cajuns have a long way to go when we come back to Cajun Field. <laughs> Louisiana will take over from its own two-yard line early in the second half, and Levi Lewis back in at the quarterback spot for Louisiana. Lewis was one for one in the first half throwing the football, but it was for an 18-yard touchdown to Jamal Bell. It's got Trey Regis in the backfield. Regis gets the handoff and not going very far as the Tigers had that one sniffed out. Regis may Trey get Regis one. On yeah, Levi gets in a tough situation here, backed up. So see Stop what he can do to move the offense there. Wins. And I, I tell you, you know, Andre finished Second the end of the minute. half there with a good two-minute drive for a touchdown. Now let's see if Levi can get things going and, and backed up in here. 
Nose guard Linwood Banks, product of Peabody High in Alexandria. Is there on the stop. Lewis rolls to throw, and he's going to have to throw it away as he is hit hard in the backfield. Yeah, naked complete. route that time. Gramlin didn't bite on it and did a good job holding up um, Johnny Lumpkin to tight end as he was trying to slip out of there. And that was, again, DeAndre Hoags, who's been involved in a lot of plays for the Tigers tonight. So third and long, deep in their own end of the field, and the Cajuns need to get a couple just to be able to have full punt formation. Big down for the Tigers, trying to keep them backed up right here, keep the Cajuns backed up. Lewis to throw over the middle. He's got it complete, and it is going to be enough for a first down. Nice grab of the tight end, Matt Barnes. Yeah, Barnes, bring Barnes on the shallow crosser. As we see it here on the we see it coming back. Cajuns going to pick up the pace a little bit. Louisiana. Cajuns will overload to the left side. And Regis is going to take it the other way, and he's got some running room. Breaks loose from the tackle, off to the races, and just tripped up at midfield. Boy, you see the Trey speed Regis by Trey Regis is so much different than what he had. Now, last year, I'm not saying the kid was slow, Dan. I'm just saying he was a lot eight, thicker. Eight, eight, and now you get to see him crease it. The Cajuns put those Louisiana. three receivers to the other side. Gramley went corners over, which knew that you knew now that they were going to play man. So if you increase first level, second level, it's gone. He's got a touchdown here, if not for Christmas. Christmas comes in and makes the shoestrings just bare tackle just past midfield. First down at midfield. Some trickery for the Cajuns. So here comes Raheem Malone trying to set up a block. He'll pick up about nine yards. He ran a long way to get Raheem nine yards. Now. Rodney Jackson with a good job of staying Rodney at home. Jackson. Product of Bastrop, Louisiana, the senior. Spotted the Back up defensive yard. end. Prevented two. a much longer game, but Malone still picks up eight, and it's second and two. Hey, if you're a Cajun coach, you've been holding that play. Once you get in that freewheeling zone, that's kind of where you want to use those things. Mitchell in the backfield along with Lewis. Pump fake, and he's going for all of it. Looking for Bradley and unable to make the catch. And it's Marcus is more than capable of that. Really nice throw by Lee by that time. Had the double move again. Two. Just a little Marcus stutter Brown. and go. It's not a true hitch or it's just he just kind of settles his feet. Gramlin puts those corners in an island a lot of times. Damian Kermite on the stop. Kermite is again the defender. Did a good job that time of staying right with Bradley, who has already got two touchdowns tonight. In fact, he's the first Cajun since Jamal Robinson did it against Texas State about five years ago to have two touchdown grabs in a game. So third and short now. Mitchell the backfield. He gets the call, and he'll pick up the first down and a few more. Elijah Mitchell on the carry. Yeah, Elijah getting physical up in there. You like to see him finishing the run that way. Louisiana. The long run by Regis gives him 142 yards on 13 carries. And, of course, he has a touchdown. Mitchell now with five carries for 21 yards. Quick pitch to Mitchell looking for some running room. Gets tripped up a little bit in the backfield. And Christmas Elijah is over Mitchell here to run him down. Carry. I'm chuckling a little bit, Dan, as I watch the Cajun coaches on the sideline trying Tangle to get the formation five. lined up. Christmas. The Cajuns have two tight ends in the game. I have Lumpkin at eight, number 88 and then Barnes number 10. Using Barnes more of an eight to move seven. guy and stuff, trying to formation themselves to get on the edge against Grammar. Like we talked about with that 3-3 three, three scheme, it's tough to run up inside just because of all the movement. They're trying to get an edge at some point. Second and seven. Again, it's Mitchell and sti stiff arms and skips over. One of the Tiger defenders, Callahan, is finally there to make the stop, but Mitchell's got another first down. And these Cajun and that's good running backs, they can run uh, these guys in and out with Regus and Mitchell and Kale and also Jordan Wright. That can wear down a defense. Yeah, you mentioned Kale. He's in there right now. And, and you know, they have some similar traits and they have some different traits that make them all individually special. 
And Coach Jaluk Jalou told us about how, how happy he was with the depth of the position. Another naked. And Lewis has Barnes, the tight end. He's at the 10. He's at the 5, and he is into the end zone. Lewis pass complete to number 10, Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes, Barnes the tight end. Touchdown. Yeah, mentioned the two tight ends. That time the H-back slips out the back end. Remember years ago we had Buck Monk on Ryan McGrath trying to use those two guys similar to what the, the Cages are doing now with Barnes and Lumpkin. Tigers bid in on the run fake. Kyle foul into a tip, the extra point. Malone was out front. Didn't have to make much of a block. And foul is in for the conversion. A 98-yard drive in 10 plays. The kick As is good. Foul adds the extra point. Left in the third quarter, it's so much for a tough situation. Grambling 10. 9.38 left in the third quarter. Matt Barnes' first career touchdown give the Cajuns a 42-10 lead. A product of mastery. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Kicking up for Louisiana, number 41, Calvin Lennon. Back deep to receive his number Matt 10, Barnes, first career touchdown. And it comes like this on the fake. The Tigers bite. And Barnes has an easy path pretty much to the end zone. Is Raheem Malone and Kenan Barnes both blocking downfield. Well, when you can run the football, then people tend to outnumber you, train outnumber you against it, and then you just slip a guy in the flat. Linden's kickoff is handled and brought it back, coming back to about the 45-yard line. Another good return by Malik, Malik Rout. Rout. On the return, knocked out of bounds by number 33. They got plenty of work Michael on kickoff cover Jr. today, so, you know, the Cajuns will get to go and get a lot of film on that and help them prepare for next week. Cajuns be open, but help them prepare First for in a couple weeks when they go to Starkville, Mississippi. I think that was Jam Williams in on the tackle on the end. And, uh, of course, Williams is a two-sport athlete for the Cajuns. Also a member of the Cajun baseball team. Trying to find a spot here in the secondary. Higbottom still in at quarterback for the Tigers. Nice return out to the 48 as the Tigers with good field position. Quick throw. Middle, or rather, uh, I guess a little bubble screen to... Pass completes number 82, Devontae Davis. To Davis. Get a little outside Roll hitch trying to come back inside, get the big guys out in front. Second Davis does a good job making three. people miss. Gerald McDowell, the Ole Miss transfer on the tackle. Second and about three after a pickup of seven. Hickbotham with again with the throw, finds an open man down the sideline and just did step out of bounds as he got hit when he came back in. That was Ross on the reception. Kobe Ross. Yeah, good throw on the move by Hickbottom that time. Cajuns to keeping that too high secondary. Ball Look, Cole Haynes having to come off the hatch to go make that play to run him out. Tigers only had three first downs in the first half. And and two of the three were just on the extended plays. You remember the big the big one pass play and the big the big scramble, and those were the two first downs. So really to have a drive going, you can't say that they ever did. Hickbottom throwing and finding a man wide open. That's Brooks. That's to number six, Found a Brooks. big opening on the right side in the Cajun secondary, and Kendall Johnson, Kendall Johnson had to run him down. Yeah, a little First wheel route Grand coming Grand from the inside to the outside, getting vertical out there. Cajuns have that hole behind the corner, and, and good job by Higbottom hitting it there. Now the, the Tigers have had a put, been, been able to put a little drive together here. Wholesale substitutions for Louisiana, especially on the front line as... Ben, didn't know if we were going to see McCaskill in there. He is actually in there at linebacker. Had heard he might be hurt, but, but he's out there playing now. Hickbottom has Justin Richard behind him, but he'll keep it himself, roll to the right, throw it in the end zone, and it is incomplete, knocked away, and a flag is down. And I don't know, it's maybe called a illegal downfield because I, you know, Hickbottom held on to it a long time. On the RPO, as long as you get the ball going, your guys aren't going to be downfield. But if, if you hold on to it too long and keep coming, and they tend to be down there. Ross again was the targeted receiver, and Tariq Miller was the guy who made a nice defensive play to jar that ball loose. Yeah, so 
you've got the guys downfield. Again, you know, with, with all the run pass options and stuff, your linemen are blocking the run play. And, and so you gotta get, you got to make that decision quick. If you do it as you're outside the box or you're tending to drift too much, then you, know, you, you can't ask the big guys to know what's going on. Wake Angoa was the guy downfield, left side guard. I've been waiting to get his name in all night. Guy from Dallas, Texas, a sophomore, 335. Hard to miss if he gets downfield. Right, and he was just doing his job. That, that's, that, you know, he gets the penalty right there, but it's not, it's, it's, it's no bad on his part. Higbottom under some pressure, and he's going to be sacked. Yeah, Jock Boudreaux coming in there with a little blitz, coming out there. Jock is an emotional guy. You know he's going to get excited over the stuff. Dan, if your name is Jock Boudreaux, you're supposed to be playing linebacker for Cajun. I'm just telling you. I know he's from New Orleans, but, you know. Came out of Holy Cross High School. Started eight times last year as a sophomore. One of only three returning starters on this Cajun defense. Hickbottom again. He'll scramble again to his left, and he'll just throw this one away, and he takes a pretty good pop over right in front of the Cajun bench. And again, Boudreaux is the guy chasing him down. And, and, you know, as the year goes on, the, the Tiger receivers will be able to adjust to the scramble a little bit better. That time, Higbottom broke his left, and his receivers tended to be working back towards the middle of the field instead of trying to mirror him. That's just something that just it takes time to be able to get into that. Third and long for the Tigers. Just a minute ago, they were down deep in Cajun territory, but now facing a big third down. The freshman, Richard, still in at the running back spot. Hickbottom with good protection this time, throws it in the end zone. But Deuce Wallace, Cajun safety, Cody was the closest Ross. guy to it as they were targeting Ross again. Yeah, just trying to get Ross vertical right there. Deuce had plenty of stuff, Deuce I mean, Ross plenty of lead on him because he's sitting back on that hash and stuff, down. really didn't have anything. A lot of times you're trying to hit the check down when you see that safety sit so far deep. Deuce Wallace, the son of former Raging Cajun quarterback Don Wallace. Yeah, it was a neat deal we saw this spring when they gave Deuce a scholarship out it's here it's during the, the spring game. 30, and, uh, you know, it was kind of neat to have Donnie, his, his dad, down there, an old teammate of mine. Garrett Urban with a 41-yard field goal attempt. He's already got one field goal on the night. This one is up, and he is no good wide to the, the left. The is no good, and with 6.52 left in the, the third Cajuns quarter, turn away the Tiger offensive threat. 10. And they still lead 42-10. to 10 on lead Grambling's Tigers 42 to 10 as we return to play midway through the third quarter and Andre Nunez returns at quarterback for Louisiana. Nunez has had the hot hand all night 16 out of 19 throwing the football and looking for Raheem Malone and he gets him at midfield. Nope check that it was not Malone. That time it was the other three. Complete. Like Jordan Wright on the wheel right for Louisiana. Yeah, coming out of the backfield that time, the Cajun set with a two-back look. Actually, one of the backs was a tight end and just getting him behind, behind the receiver coming down the, down the sideline. Takes it right to midfield. And Nunez now 17 out of 20 
on the night. Hand off to Mitchell. Mitchell picks his way for some running room. He'll have five or six. Yeah, that's Jordan Wright again, Dan. He's still in there at the running back. And that time the Cajuns went into their tackle over again, but left the tight end on the backside of it and just ran right at it. Christmas again in on the tackle. That tackle that came over is a true freshman we talked about, Max Mitchell, who we talked to Coach Sale, offensive coordinator, offensive line coach, how high he was on Max right now at the left tackle position, number 74. True freshman from Monroe, only about 30 miles from the Grambling campus. Nunez has Wright in the pistol, and Wright will get the handoff. And he'll bust up the middle for about five more. Looks like he Jordan probably Wright has enough for the first down, Stop and he does. The cage is going to lean on the big guys a little bit, take the and wheel on the first play of the uh, drive to kind of get things moving, and then put it on the guys up front. Linebacker Brandon Wiggs making the tackle, but not before Wright picks up the first down. Here's another tackle, over, but no tight end on the backside this time. Got the bubble on the outside because of the this numbers. This is Patterson, and Patterson shakes free. Patterson inside the 20, inside the 15. It's going to come back, though. Got holding on the outside. Chris Grant makes the tackle downfield, but the flag is down. It looks like that they will be bringing this one back. Cajuns need to be careful a little bit on the outside. There's there's starting to be a lot of jaw, and I'm sure there's frustration on, on, on Gramlin's part in the secondary, uh, you know, giving up the, the, the points that they've given up to this point. And I'm sure the Cajun receivers are having a good time letting them know what the score is. Saw a couple of ejections today in some of the uh, games that we were able to watch earlier this afternoon. Both of those I saw were targeting, so one uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, but... We'll hope, of course, we don't see anything like that as Kenan Barnes is uh, the uh, the wide out who was called for the hold. Yeah, he's a big physical guy. I mean, that's one of the reasons that they like him out there so much, and, and he's one that's got to keep his emotions in check. And of course, Gremlin's going to do everything they can to get him, you know, a little off his, off his game. Ball spotted at the 46-yard line. The ball will be spotted back at the 46. It will be first and about 16. Right again in the backfield along with Nunez. And he'll find right out of the backfield. He'll have a short gain on their left side. Nunez pass complete to number 83, Pat Hughes. Yeah, nice easy throw and catch for Andre that time. And, and I, Dan, I like the way the Cajun game has gone as far as being called. I mean, a lot of easy throws for the quarterbacks and stuff. And being able to run the ball up front. You know, when you can do it with the play tags, it makes it a lot easier. Cecil Cherry makes the stop, a junior from Frost Proof, Florida. I've been waiting on that one all night, too. That kind of fits for a Florida city, Frost Proof. Hand off to Raymond Colley, and the former All-State sprinter finds a hole, and oh, he trips over Raymond the five-yard line carry. and gets robbed of a touchdown after a big game. But line. he wasn't going to get Good caught, I, I, you know, I guess. I, I want to say that uh, Blackjack, we used to say all the time, that Blackjack, the old equipment manager, if you ever stumbled like that, then that was BJ reached up and got you one time. But I know he knows the Kyle family. He wouldn't do that. Just lost his balance at about the five-yard line. There's a Tiger down on the field, well back behind the play. And I believe it's Cherry, who we were just talking about a moment ago. Florida product. Nope, not Cherry. It is uh, actually Anthony That's, Mullins. Yeah, Mullins, big defensive end transfer out there. And, you know. Well, I know you like him. After yeah, I really him on do. Film. He's a good player. He's a real good player. Injured on the play is number eight, Anthony transfer Mullins. Transfer from Mississippi State. Richard Senior, who had 27 tackles last year, but – Eight University of them were minus yardage, and seven of them were sacks. And, and that wasn't even a full year because he had some, some time to before they let him get on the field. So he, he's a good player. It's going to do a nice job for him this year. First and goal for the Cajuns inside the two. Kale is still the running back. Lumpkin comes across in motion. Kale is going to get the call, and he is going to be into the end zone. Kale yeah, that's, that's fitting. You know, give Raymond a chance to finish off what he started in there. And, and, you know, get the big guys around and let them celebrate. Now, there's something, too, that we talked about in our pre-game meeting. Now we see a late flag coming in here. 
uh, our preseason meetings with the officials, the, the play clock has started. So the, not to say that they're trying to stop celebration, but but the 40 seconds starts as soon as the guy scores, and so you got to get the kicking team on. Foul into a tip of the extra point. But with the flag down, it will Yeah, it'll, it'll go to a, to a 25 second. And, and it, they can take, uh, Cages can take this if it's against Grandma. After the play, unsportsmanlike, 98, defense. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, Alan Clark is hit for the unsportsmanlike after the play. And you hope you don't get start seeing First, that the rest of the conduct, way. Number 98. Yeah, that's what happens. So every now and then, people get a little bit frustrated, and you tend to verbalize a little bit. And, you know, like if, if, if asked to call roll, I might have to raise my hand that I did talk a little bit from time to time. But, um, you know, you just don't want to see things get out of hand. Foul is six for six on conversions. Make that seven for seven. Kick is up and good. And with 355 left in the third quarter. He tacks this one on. Cajuns move to 49 to 10. There you see Raymond Colley. Product of the uh, crawfish capital of the world, Brobridge, Louisiana. And give a little love, Dan, to, to Jackson Ladner, the long snapper. And then Cole Haynes is, is doing the holding. For the case. That was a question that I had coming into it. Who's going to do the holding? But the operation of those six for six has gone really well today. Catch you up on some Sunbelt scores from today. Second quarter, you see the one on the bottom right. Louisiana Tech is at South Alabama. And that's a pretty big game matching up the Sun Belt against Conference USA. Boise State, I tell you what, that's impressive to go into Troy and roll up 56 on a team that's a pretty good defensive football team. Yeah, good team. And, and Dan, just the travel to get to Troy is a, ch is a chore, especially coming from it's, Boise. It's hard from here. I can only yeah, imagine yeah. from Boise. And Arkansas State doing a nice job. Georgia Southern doing a nice job. Anticipate that. App State with a new quarterback in there did a really good job going to overtime, getting beat by Penn State there. Texas State tried to watch them a little bit, didn't get to. I did watch a little bit of Coastal against South Carolina. And South Carolina handled them pretty good. We'll get a chance to see Coastal Carolina three weeks from tonight. And that doesn't have the, the Thursday night games where uh, ULM was able to win there on Thursday night as well as Georgia State. Both of them had to come back late in the game to win. Powell is going to handle the kickoff duties this time as they'll be kicking it from midfield after the 15-yard penalty. Well, he's getting a healthy run-up. I don't know that I've seen a whole lot of 12-yard run-ups. Rout and Simone are, again, the deep for the Tigers. It's, it's a squib kick. It'll be a bouncer, and it's a free ball at the five-yard line, and in some serious trouble. Well, I'm not going to criticize his run-up. It's the same by number 16, Khalif Simon. Salmon had trouble coming up with that bouncing kick, and the Cajuns had really good coverage on that. And they took full advantage of getting that extra 15 yards. Yeah, sometimes you see guys just, you know, kind of give it away and just, just kick it through the end zone. Cajuns use this opportunity to, to pin the Tigers. The Tigers will start inside their own two-yard line. Now, the Cajuns have a 98-yard drive already in this half. See if the Tigers can match that here. They'll have Alden Clark. They'll be back to quarterback. Yeah, I think we're seeing a couple of new guys up front in the defensive line. We got a flag just came in, and I think what this is, Dan, the, the, the 40-second clock ran out. Delay a game. Offense, number two, half the distance to the goal. Well, that'll be a penalty of about First two half. feet. Yeah, about a half yard. Yeah. But it still puts it back at the one, and now you've got a – a situation where you, know, you have the, the the goal line is right uh, right at your back, and you need a little yardage here. Okay, we've got a quarterback change for Gramlin in here now. Clark looking for a running room. He's going to find some on the left side. He'll get out of bounds, and he'll be close to the first down mark. Yeah, good job by Clark that time. And, again, that's that's something that's hurt seven. the Cajuns on their rush and just staying in rush discipline. I mean, it's one thing to try and get away and get a sack, but the other thing is you've got to maintain your rush discipline. Farad Gardner runs him out of bounds over here. Gardner, a junior college transfer from Dayton, Ohio. And he did get enough yards for the first down, did Alden Clark. Sixth first down of the ball game for the Tigers. Number 27, Justin Richard. Richard 
the freshman from Alexandria on the first down carry. Yeah, Tamaje Porter on the tackle for the Cajuns, another one of those freshmen. We'll start seeing some freshmen in here, and we'll talk as the broadcast goes on about the redshirt rule, but you, you're allowed to Second play freshman now without losing your year of eligibility. You can still redshirt after four games. And we might see a lot of those tonight, as you said. A lot of changes up front for the Cajuns as Clark gets tripped up by Middleton on the far side. But he's got enough yardage for another first down for the Tigers. Clark yeah, the quarterback run game is something that the Cajuns are going to have to yeah, work on. They, they got a couple of weeks to work on it, you know, before they get to Mississippi State. But that's, Fresh you know, when you play so much too high and, and play a lot of man on the outside, you tend to run people out of there, and it exposes a lot of grass for the guys once they break the front. And they are going to see a lot of mobile quarterbacks in the Sun Belt Conference this no year. No doubt. Clark back to throw. Good protection this time. He's going to throw short and complete. Pass complete to number 16. That's Salmon. Khalif Salmon. Yeah, and if you're grambling, this is what you want to see. Just the ability to get off your own goal line. Now you've already flipped the field. Now let's just go and try and reload everything and see if you can't get a, get, get something out of it. Blair Brooks was in there on the tackle. The Tigers pick up their third first down of this drive. Clock moving inside two minutes in the third quarter. Clark out on the near side again. He targets route. He jitterbugs his way up for about four. Yeah, had, had to run pass option on that time. Had to bubble on the outside. Had no took it. Jalen Johnson out to make the tackle. The redshirt freshman. Product of Central Catholic High in Morgan City. Clark again with the keeper. Throws and stepping out of bounds, trying to make the spin move on the far Darryl side Clark. is Daryl Clark. Yeah, just kind of ran out of room out there. You know, last year, Dan Gramlin opened that at Tulane and, and got beat. Got beat pretty good, but they were able to ra uh, rally and have 11 consecutive wins before they lost in the Celebration Bowl. That's something now that where the Cajuns, I mean, the, the, the Tigers are going to try and get some questions answered before we get out of this game. Do they have a quarterback? Can they do some things offensively? Who can make the plays for them? And I think that's what Coach Fobbs is going to try and do here through this uh, end of the third and fourth quarter. Well, he knows that Daryl Clark can make plays. He was his leading receiver from last year. As this toss from Clark is out to Richard out of the backfield. Clark's pass and he anticipated he being Coach Fobbs anticipated playing both quarterbacks. And I think that, you know, we've seen some, uh, some opportunities for both of them to make plays, and they, they have, and they've missed some chances also. Fourth first down of the drive for Grambling as they are at the Cajuns 40. And Clark has done a good job of distributing the ball around on this drive. Going on the outside, looking for running room, but running out of room on the far side is Brooks. Yeah, I think that's going to be something that will be tough for opponents to do against the Cajuns trying to kind of get on the edge just because of all the speed they have on the field. The other thing to remember about the drive is it started after the penalty, 99 yards from, from Pater. So, I mean, this, this is a big deal for the K, for the Tigers to be able to do this as we go to the fourth that's quarter. That's the end of the third quarter with your score, Louisiana That will be the end of the third quarter. The Cajuns... Making the hometown crowd happy, 49 to 10 over the Tigers here at Cajun Field. Mondays are made for Monday Night Football. Jets Lions at 710 and Rams Raiders at 1015, September 10th on ESPN. Running backs and they're proving it today. 24 to 10 first downs as Grambling opens up here in the second half and Lewis, or rather Clark runs out of time in the backfield, sort of tries to power forward and get what he can, but he got Clark sandwiched from both sides. Benny Higgins was one of the guys in there. Number 95, Andre Riley on the tackle. And one of the young guys, it's Riley, coming in off the 10. edge out of his outside linebacker position. And watching him, I really like the way he uses his hands. And it was just an effort sack. Was able to fight his way through the offensive tackle. Card stepped up a little bit, and he finished it properly. Yeah, I thought that was him. It was actually Riley, a freshman from Plaquemine. And it'll be a third and long as Clark looking for receiver. He's going for a lot of it downfield and overthrows his 
intended receiver on the left side. That was Devontae Davis. Yeah, Michael Jacquet out on the outside. And really excited to see Michael go make a play like that, getting getting a chance to do it at the corner position. And uh, Michael was the guy that played high school quarterback for old partner Toby Foreman over there in Beaumont and then played receiver for the Cajuns, moved him over to corner. And the thing I like about him, Dan, he plays corner with his feet. I mean, he doesn't reach and grab, doesn't get a panic. He's got plenty of enough catch-up speed to go ahead and run with people. And he was going against a pretty good receiver. Davis started all 13 games for the Tigers last year. This is Mendez in punt formation. It'll be the rugby kick, giving his guys time to get down in coverage. But this one's going to carry into the end zone. And it'll be a touchback. Mendez punt and the Cajuns will go the back on offense. 49-10, Cajuns over the Tigers on a hot night here in South Louisiana. People are switching to Ram than ever before. September 10th on ESPN. Through a little bit over three quarters, it's a very successful first outing for Cajun head coach Billy Napier, quarter, one of only seven, seven guys to begin this season making his head coaching debut in uh, the FBS ranks. Well, and, and, you know, Coach Napier coming in, he takes the ball on the opening kickoff, and you think, let's get our offense out there and do something, really struggled, you know, didn't do well the first series. Defense gives a big play, and then since then it's been all Cajuns. Levi Lewis back in at the quarterback spot. Ashton Johnson on the carry. Ashton Johnson on the carry as the Cajuns substituting heavily in the backfield. Johnson was a guy who saw a lot of action in the spring when the rest of the Cajun running backs were nicked up. Yeah, see Alex Allen in there at tight end, also number 81 for the Cajuns moving around. Deion Ray is actually playing at a receiver position, inside receiver at the top of the field for the Cajuns. And Deion, as we know last year, was the kind of the wildcat quarterback for the Cajuns. So, the, this staff has decided to, to move him to a slot position and give him a chance to contribute in that way. Hand off again to Johnson. Finds a little bit of running room. He's over the 30, out to about the 34, and he'll have enough for Johnson a first down. Yeah, got some clean jerseys up front Second doing a good job. Shane Ballow is left tackle in there. Brewster is in there at center. And we know he's a good player. Cordell has started before for the Cajuns. And so got some new guys up front trying to eliminate some, some defenders for Grambling and trying to run football. Be physical. Finish this off physical. New guy also in for Grambling. Sundiata Anderson was on the tackle. Freshman defensive lineman from Atlanta. Cajuns are now over 300 yards rushing in the game. Johnson again gets the call. Gets Johnson met this time right at the line of scrimmage. Pushes his way forward for Ball's about three. Yeah, I got a flag probably going to end up with, I say, holding, but it could have been from where the white hat threw it. Could have seen the face mask on the grab. You mentioned freshman, Dan. We'll probably start saying that a lot uh, here towards the end of the game. And, and in the first few weeks, you, you know, you're allowed now to play four games without losing your redshirt year. And as we get the call here shortly from the officials, you know, back in the day, if you played one snap at all. Personal foul, hands to the face, 92 defense, 15 yards into the run, first down. And at this point for Gramlin right there, giving, giving the Cajuns that free one right there. But Wesley Green, the redshirt freshman from DeSoto, Texas, getting hit for the personal foul. Yeah, people used to ask all the time, well, how much can you play and first still get a redshirt? Well, until this year, well, you couldn't play a snap. But, but now you're allowed to play. Now, one snap constitutes a game. And so you're, you're, you're allowed to play in four games. And if you play four or less, then you can still not count that year towards your eligibility. So you'll get a lot of guys a chance. Lewis throw on the near Lewis side intended for Johnson. Three, incomplete, Johnson. a little bit high. And Lewis was under a Seven lot of pressure that time. Grambling came with the blitz up the middle, and any guesses who that was yeah, that was, was in there making the pressure? Yeah, I mean, and you mentioned early that Christmas comes early. Christmas comes often when you're Grambling. I mean, that cat is good. Now, he, he makes plays. He does it from the inside. Like I said, he's not a big guy, but he's, he's quick. He's explosive, and, and he gets where he gets with a bad attitude, and, and I, I like him a lot. Lewis looking to throw, showing a little bit of his elusiveness. Now throwing downfield, and it is going to be caught. 
A flag is going to be down, but the reception is made downfield by Pat Hughes. Hughes. We noticed Pat a couple times. He's a big old cat. Now, good job by Levi escaping the pressure right here and really didn't have anything, anybody open. But it comes back on this side now, and and, and he gives Pat a chance to go up and big boy it, and, and, and Pat does. You got two flags on the field. One was down at the spot where Hughes was tackled out of bounds. Martin was the guy down making the tackle, Devon or Martin. Well, we've got a flag and a hat. Got a guy down there, and usually, well, I say that. I mean, he's wanting to throw twice is what it is. He just ran out of laundry. Hughes is a 6'4 freshman from Brother Martin High in New Orleans and looks bigger than 6'4. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he's lean now, but he's long, long, long. But that was going to come back. Offense. Okay, so the hat. Yep, out stepped bounds, out of bounds before he came back in and Previous made the catch. Spot. Yep. Previous spot, five yards. After the play, personal foul. Grambling, number 25. First down, 15 yards. And Martin was hit for the tackle out of bounds. So they'll pace off the illegal touching, and then they'll go back 15 the other way, and I think it will result as a first down for the Cajuns at the 40. If their math is correct, because it started out on the line, so go back five, go up 15. I mean, that's 10 plus. Correction. The illegal touching has lost the down previous spot. 15 yards from previous spot. First down, automatic first down, Louisiana. Yeah. The illegal touching goes just like an incompletion. We had said that earlier. So, so the Cajuns will have it at the 34. But again, good job by Levi escaping the pressure and also giving his guy a chance to, to make the play. I mean, he's got a big old cat up there. Just throw it up there. And he's got Hughes on the far right side now. Ashton Johnson still in the running back. Allen, the tight end, comes across. Johnson up the middle. And again, finding good running room and a good Johnson hard run carry. by Johnson. Now, you mentioned Allen moving the, the move tight end right there. Uh, Turner was the, the inline. Chris Turner from Lafayette High was the inline tight end and doing a good job. Guys cleaning it up nicely up front for Cajuns. Johnson, junior from Baton Rouge. Had a, as we said earlier, had a solid spring, getting a chance to get in some action tonight. Second and short. Lewis to throw. And it is going to be picked off. And they'll say he stepped out of bounds, but the Tigers will have it going the other way as that time Martin was able to jump the route. That's Ball went off the hands of the receiver. Martin, Martin with the first pick and the first turnover of the night for yeah. either team. Caleb Gossett was a receiver for the Cajuns. He's got to make that play. Now, uh, Levi had a little heat on it, but but Gossett's 6'5 guy. He's got to be there and make that play for, for uh, Levi. Man, is that first turnover? First turnover for either team tonight. Yeah. Man, that's, I guess that's pretty good for a season no, opening game. That's, that's really good. That's really. I mean, that's what you want to see. You want to see pen, penalties minimized. Uh, you want to see, you know, see if you can take care of the football. Grambling will take over at the 22, and Alden Clark is back in at the quarterback spot. Tigers were able to move a little bit with Clark under center or behind center last uh, last possession. Quick handoff up the middle. That's Justin Richard again, the freshman. They've got a couple of new guys inside now for the Cajuns, and, and we've seen a lot of spring ball with them, but, you know, one of the guys that showed up, Alonzo Brown, is there an inside linebacker, number 31 there. Clark again with Richard in the backfield. And Richard finding some running room on the left side. He'll take it out close to the first Richard down. He'll be about three yards short. And another third and three for the Tigers. Well, Grandma was able to convert a couple of first downs in the last drive. Let's see if they, they, they would like to see if they can keep that going for them. And Cajuns want to see if this defense can get off the field. Not a lot of starters out there right now. Now, Tigers only three out of 11 on third down conversions tonight. Clark going for a lot, and a flag's going to be down, and it looks like somebody's going to be hit for interference. 
Yeah, I think we, they're, they're going to get Christian Waller. Uh, I'm sorry, not, um, this Dorsey is the corner for the Cajuns right there. We're pushing and shoving a little bit in there. And Devon again. Lindsay was the intended receiver. Pass interference. Defense, number 22, 15 yards, previous spot. First down. Again, I mentioned earlier about Michael Jacquet playing corner with his feet. That's when you when you get in trouble is when you start having to to get in the chase position. You start having to use your hands, and uh, at time occasion the defender was forced to use his hands a little bit. And it's because he was in a panic because he got beat at the line of scrimmage and had his back turned to the play. And yep. that's going to happen more often than not. Kind of always get a kick out of them guys after they push him down. Then all of a sudden they act like, "Why well, I didn't do nothing." At the 44, first and 10. Quick hitch route on the left side and run out of bounds over there is uh, Salmon. to number 16, Khalif Salmon. Short pickup on the play. I think that's uh, in the secondary, Arrow Brown on, on the tackle for the Cajuns right there. Had got caught in space. Got to make Pick that play one. out there. Not a bad Second job. Down Inside 10 minutes to go. Tigers still trying to find some consistency on the offensive side. Quick hitter up the middle. Ball comes loose. Mentioned fumble. I mean, mentioned turnover. It looks Richard like they got one apiece now. The because, uh, that was Richard. Yep. But it looks like the Tigers are on it. Did not see who got it back, but one of the guys in the white jerseys got it. Recovered by Grambling. And the pickup will go guys. for about uh, six it's yards, and it'll and be two. third and a couple. So, Gremlin, we just want to see if they can keep this drive alive, make something happen here towards the end of it. Again, some elusiveness from the quarterback as Clark it's going to get out of bounds, and he'll have enough for the first Clark down. Keeps, runs out of bounds at the 45-yard line. First and 10, Grambling. Dorsey's able to run him out on the right in front of the Cajun bench. I see Deuce Wallace coming out. Uh, Braylon Trahan, the Lafayette product from KDN High School, is coming in the game. Eric Guerra also coming in at a cornerback spot. First and 10 for the Tigers. Now, Eric's one of the true freshmen we thought we'd see. We also saw A.J. Washington in there. He's another DB. He's a true freshman. Handoff up the middle as uh, Number 20, Ladarian, Ladarian Ellis, Ellis Jones, Jones gets Gary. his first carry of the night, and he gets wrapped up quickly. Yeah, Carlos Robinson makes a play from inside linebacker position for the Cajuns. No gain on the play, second and ten. Participation guy is going to have a lot of work to do tonight. Now we've got a lot of people coming in and out. A lot of guys are going to get to. Uh, they're earning their chicken for the supper tonight. Clark again in the shotgun, throwing over the middle and completing it. Diving Pass grab, nice 81, catch Kobe Ross. by Ross. He's made a couple of nice catches tonight. His third catch of the night. And it's third down and four. Clark's done a pretty good job of moving the team the couple yep. of series that he's been in. Now, he's also done it against mostly backups for the Cajuns, but 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 he's kept it pretty clean for him. He's made good decisions. He showed his athleticism there. Throw over the middle is caught, and you know, what a catch. Yeah, really That's nice. Complete to number 88, On the Khalif part Jackson. of Khalif Jackson, the, uh, who was anticipated to be the starting tight end, a junior. Braylon Trahan was right there. I tell you what, did a good job defending it, but you know, it hard to defend one where the guy makes an athletic catch like that. Yeah, you really can't. So another first down for the Tigers. See Middleton and Gardner come back in for the Cajuns now at the linebacker spot. The quarterback again, Clark, takes it on the left side. Number two, Alden Clark keeps. Now that's what he can do if, if, if you're grandma. I mean, you got to use him and run. Now, the other thing is you expose yourself, your, your guy, to, to more collisions Second, yeah, doing that. But, you know, when he gives you such a big advantage with that, you, you almost got to take it if you're Coach Fobbs. Carlos Robinson from Monroe. 
Again, close by the Grambling campus over there to make the stop. Second and short for the Tigers. As we approach the six-minute mark. Again, finding an open man on the far side. Pass complete to number 20, Ladarian yep. Ellis Jones. That's just Ellis Jones once again being targeted. Right now, just had him right seven. now coming out of the backfield. Jones does a good job. Clark can hit him a little bit center so he can tuck turns get up the sideline with it. But walk on. Wise. Yep, walk on Errol Brown, from, senior from New Orleans. Makes the tackle. Clark again on first down. Hand off again, and again, it's Ellis, Ellis Jones. Jones. Yeah, good push by the Grambling offensive line that time. The G-Man loading up a little bit, uh, taking advantage of, of their size and just pushing the Cajuns back. Farad Gardner over to make the stop. Second down and six. Nice drive so far for Grambling here down the stretch. Got their only touchdown from the quarterback. That time again, Ellis, Ellis Jones, Jones, but he carry. is met before he can get very far. And again, it's Blair Brooks. That shows a burst coming off the hash, making that play off the, uh, outside. It's third down and five. Cajun defensive coaches talked that they had developed a lot of depth in the spring and over the summer. And we're seeing that now. Obviously, the game pretty much out of hand, but there's some of these guys getting a chance to play. Clark finding a seam, the quarterback, and he's going to take it down inside the five-yard line. Well, and the good thing about this, Dan, when you go back and you watch uh, film as a tackle, I, I mean, uh, and you watch film of yourself on film, when they go back in there tomorrow, they got a lot of guys that are going to pay attention. But, you know, it's not like you're watching your buddies. You're watching yourself. Everybody gets a chance to see in there, and they get fussed at, and they get praised. From the three, first and goal. Clark on the handoff up the middle. Ellis Jones, and he's going to be just short. They'll probably spot it inside the one. Another one of those freshmen, Mastery Mapew, was in there making the tackle, and a timeout's going to be called. 3.46 left in this one. Cajuns firmly in control, 49-10. to 10. Back at Cajun Field in just a moment. The Raging Cajun Chicken. Okay, chicken it is. Chick-fil-A nuggets make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. Second and goal for the Tigers inside the one-yard line. Rambling with a touchdown halfway through the second quarter, trying to get a second score on the board. Handoff up the middle and spinning into the end zone is Ellis Jones. Ladarian Ellis Jones. Ellis Jones with the carry into the end zone for a touchdown. Gives the Tigers their second touchdown of the night. Just, just got out of the grasp of Farad Gardner. I was able to spin his way into the end zone. Yeah, last time the Tigers were down there, they kind of hurt themselves with a penalty, a couple of penalties that Injured time. The got away with a little stutter in the backfield Aaron by Burbank. Jones, but, but he was able to reset, give himself plenty of time before the handoff. Garrett Urban in to attempt the point. Had a field goal to start the scoring in this game. The Tigers led it 3 to nothing in the first four minutes. This kick is up, and it is kick good. Kick is up and good, and with 3.41 left in tonight's ballgame, your score, Louisiana 49, so The Tigers 17. get back on the scoreboard. The Cajuns still in control, 49-17, as we back to Cajun Field to wrap this one up. You can't look away. It's at 10-15, September 10th on ESPN. Grambling goes 78 yards in 15 plays, and they take up seven minutes and 39 seconds off the clock in getting their second touchdown of the night. Touchdown provided by Ladarian Ellis-Jones on a one-yard run. 
Back deep to receive number 22, Ernest Patterson. And it'll be the Tigers number again to Vegas. kick off as Mendez will be kicking. And Ernest Patterson now the deep guy for the Cajuns. That's one of those that ended up out of bounds. I think that was uh, Trey Regas back there on that side. That was actually Trey Regas on that side. Yep. They kicked away from Patterson. There's a flag down somewhere. Yeah, it's a penalty. He threw it out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Out of bounds. Kicking team number 33. Oh, okay, I thought it was Ball touched first. Though. Obviously, it was not. So first down, Louisiana. The Cajuns will get the extra five yards, and it'll be Levi Lewis Louisiana coming in at quarterback yards. for what the Cajuns and all the fans hope is the last drive of this game. Well, that's what you want to see. Can you put this thing away? You got the ball. You want to be able to run the clock out. You want to keep the ball in your hands. You can get a couple of first downs. You can start taking knees and in this thing and, you know, get out of it healthy. I think both sides of it. We had a couple guys a little dinged up in there, disappointed that we didn't get to see a, a Percy Cargo come back in, a fine linebacker for Gremlin. But other than that, I think everybody that came out has come back in because I see, I see um, Mullins back in a defensive end for Gremlin. Lewis with the stamp, hands off to Johnson. Again, powering up the middle, and he's looked good in the last Ashton couple of drives. Johnson Picks up carry. six this time. Well, you know, we saw him in the spring game. It was one of those things where we didn't know if he was that good Everyone or if it's just the other guys on defense Richardson. weren't that good, but he, he showed well, some flashes in there. Yard line, and and there's a Cajun down, and yeah, that's I think Alex it's, Allen. Yep. Alex we hope is Alex is okay because Alex is a good story, but he's not – Putting a lot of pressure on that right leg. Agent on the play, number 81. Alex Allen's Allen. a guy who tried and tried and tried to get on this football team and finally was invited as a walk-on last year and impressed the coaches enough in the spring that uh, he was awarded a scholarship, and he's basically the third tight end on the roster now. Yeah, he is, and I, he's something that Coach Napier mentioned in a couple of press conferences about, you know, that was a position, you know, with, with the loss of Chase Rogers for the whole season, the returning starter at tight end, didn't know what was going to happen at that position for the Cajuns, but it's, it's been shown to be a position of depth. Oh, Levi bobbles the snap just for a second, tried to get it to Johnson, but Lewis elected Gates. to... Hold on and just take it there and not have disaster hit as the Cajuns will now face a third and nine. Yeah, not what you want to see. You want to see this come out clean. Clock's still moving, but, but I mean, just keep things going forward. Under normal circumstances, third and nine, a throwing situation, but with you leading 49 to 17 with three minutes to go, it will be Lewis to throw. A little dump off to Johnson. Johnson looking for running room. He's got the first down. Yeah, just a screen play out of that. Good job by the lineman letting him go without being, you know, giving it away too soon. And then Johnson finishes the run like you want him back to finish the run with a shoulder down. Kenan Fontenot is the uh, guy who made the stop on the sideline, but he's the guy that got the worst of it over here. As Johnson had a good head of steam and pretty good collision on that side. Not quite enough for the first two. down, so it'll be a fourth and two, and the Cajuns will punt it away with, well, they'll get it away with less than two minutes. And I think that's something that, that uh, you know, like I said, Co Coach Napier would like to have seen a couple of first downs in the ball with your team taking a knee. 28,866, the attendance on hand tonight. Most seconds. of them have Timeout. already headed home for the evening. Maybe early in the year to talk about bowl games, but the Cajuns part of the conference that has been very successful. I don't know if a lot of people realize that the Sun Belt had the second best winning percentage among all conferences last year in bowl games behind only the Big Ten and ahead of some pretty heavy hitters right behind them. Yeah, they did. And, and I tell you, that's one thing that, you know, when you cross conference lines is where you look to see how you compete, how you measure up with the other schools. And the Sun Belt has done really well when they've done that, and especially in the bowl games. It's something that where I know the importance of the bowls with the teams and, and – uh, you know, the, the Cajuns have fared well in the bowls when they've gotten the opportunity. It was good to see New Mexico State last year getting a bowl first time in a long time. But, you know, other teams that have gotten in bowls before for the first time been to like Georgia State a couple years ago and, and doing a real good job. If we see the Cajuns come in, Chris Burns is the pointer. Uh, Reese Burns is the punter for the Cajuns here. Reese Burns. 
As Dan mentioned earlier, Reese is, is another one of the Australians that the Cajuns have had. Is a little bit of a low snap, gets it off that time. Under big pressure that time, it'll be out of bounds on the far side. Cajuns did have those four straight touchdowns in the second half, and that's the first time they've done that since uh, 2000, last year against ULM, when they had four consecutive possessions that resulted in touchdowns. Uh, we haven't mentioned Trey Rake as much. We mentioned him on the out of, the kickoff out of bounds over there. 142 yards tonight. That's a career high for Regus after what was a great year last year. Well, and you know Trey showed that 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 his leaner build now. I don't want to say the more felt, but he truly is a more felt Trey Regus. And, and you know I think that that shows with his ability to have those explosive runs now. Um, you know in a couple weeks when the K after this open date the Cajun will come back and go to Mississippi State, so he'll be challenged a little bit more, but. You know, it sure makes it a lot easier going into an open date. And the other thing, I, I mentioned it before the last commercial, is that you got a lot of guys on film now. And, um, you know, that, that's going to make this next couple weeks fun. Charles Wright is now in at quarterback, the number three quarterback for the Tigers, and hands it off to Ladarian Ellis Jones, who had the touchdown just a few minutes ago. So Wright, the number three guy, getting a chance to get a few snaps this year. And I know that the Tiger coaches will like to see that because, uh, you know, you're always one play away from that guy becoming really a more of a factor. All right, and, and, and we've seen that here in Lafayette the past few years, how, just how important the backup and then the backup to the backup comes into play. And, you know, hopefully as we talk towards the end of the game, hopefully um, – you know, the Cajuns have settled at the quarterback position. I think Andre's done everything you've asked him to do tonight, as well as probably a little more than what people anticipated uh, with his feet. And, and so I know they're pleased with that. Levi had, had the one interception. I don't put that on him. Yeah, right slips in the backfield and goes down, called down. Yeah, you right talk about Andre Nunez. 19 out of 22 tonight for 184 yards, two touchdowns. And at one point completed, I believe, 11 straight passes. In fact, in the second half, he was 14 out of 15. Oh, I'm sorry. After the first quarter, yep. he was 14 out of 15. Yeah, just got on a roll. You could see it. I think the Cajuns came out the first at the start of the game with three straight passes. Didn't go very well. Came back the second drive and, and, and was more leaning on the run game with the play tags on the outside. And, and that did a lot better for the Cajuns. Third and ten, and Wright bobbles the snap on what is probably going to be the last Brent snap Keeps. of the ball game as the Tigers 15. will probably just let the Andre Jones. It's fourth down. let the clock run out. Andre Jones, the sophomore defensive end, in there to make the tackle, and that is going to be our final play of the game as the and horn's going to sound, and the game one of the Billy Red Napier Lake era 17. is very successful for the Raging Cajuns as they take a 49-17 win over the Grambling Tigers, and G, you, I think you hit it on the head. Uh, I don't think there's any question that the performance of Andre Nunez tonight was probably something that Cajun fans just had to love watching tonight. Yeah, and, and you get excited about it. You mentioned uh, Coach Napier and, and, and his first win here. This is what the Cajuns were hoping for when they when they brought Coach Napier in here. And, you know, you get a good crowd, nearly 30,000 here at Cajun Field on a bad, tough day for it. And then you come out and you start out really poor, but you rally behind it. And so that was really neat for the Cajun fans to see. Cajun coach Billy Napier, you saw there for a second, successful in his head coaching debut tonight. And now he'll prepare for an open date in Mississippi State in two weeks. And the Tigers will also be playing a Louisiana opponent next week. They'll travel to Natchitoches to take on the Demons of Northwestern State in another Louisiana contest. I think that as you go through, it's kind of what you were hoping to see after it started the way it did. Gramlin will have some stuff they'll get to go work on. They'll get to go to Northwestern and play well. And um, we'll see what the Cajuns do. Billy Napier successful in his first night as a head coach. For my buddy Gerald Broussard, and I'm Dan McDonald saying so long from Cajun Field. The final score once again, Louisiana 49 and Grambling 17. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and are archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.